the Lord began to burn in my heart again the need to drum this that one of the major needs in the body of Christ today is discipleship you see when new converts or those who just get born again if and when they are not discipled eventually the gaps in their spiritual understanding and the fact that the flesh is so alive will make them easy praise for the devil to come into partnership with their unrenewed minds and cause a lot of trouble first in the body of Christ and then by extension in society. Are we together? This is very, very important. When new converts are not discipled, they will eventually become problems first to the church and then to the larger community. Let me tell you this. Every national problem, please look up. Every national problem was first a regional problem that was not managed properly. Every regional problem was once upon a time a family problem that was not managed effectively. And every family problem was once an individual problem. You see how nations are destroyed. So an individual who is not discipled creates trouble in a family that is not discipled creates trouble in a society or a region that is not discipled eventually that individual will constitute a nuisance to not only family not only society but to the nation and even the continent at large most of the people today that trouble civilization trouble the peace and tranquility of territories all of them come from home and they did not just evolve into troublemakers of all kinds individuals when they are saved and their understanding is not so constructed especially for believers they may have given their lives to christ but we know that just giving your life to christ this is entry into the kingdom Imagine with me, for instance, that a woman gives birth to a baby and throws the baby down. Most often than not, that child will most likely be a hooligan or will be a troublemaker eventually. Why? Because the opportunity to have proper parenting upbringing is not there. You can, you can solve the problem of a nation very easily if you understand the dynamics on, of how problems are created. They first start at an individual level. Then, if left unchecked and not dealt with, they graduate into problems in families. Then from families, when those individuals are now sent from those families, they become troubles to society, communities, and to regions. And if left unchecked, they will rise to become national people who multiply the same problem. And these are the kinds of conditions that demon spirits look for. They look for individuals with no platform for discipleship. They look for families with no codes of conduct, no modus operandi. Anything just happens. They look for territories that are lawless. They look for nations with no law. This is how people are destroyed. It is very easy to destroy a nation. It is very easy to destroy a family. It is very easy to destroy a territory. All you need to do is ignore discipleship at an individual level. Just let people do anything they want to do. Unchecked. For a while it will look like they know what they are doing. Until you begin to see the damage to the family, to territory, to society, and to the nation. Are we together? So at the heart of transformation is discipleship. That is it. If we want to change this nation, we want to change Africa, we must obtain grace and wisdom from God to get back into the subject of methodical mentorship, discipleship. At least for a start, we can start with younger believers. This has been a mistake that most people have made, respectfully speaking, especially those in the mission field. We focus so much about soul winning missions and that is wonderful but there is no system to manage these people when they are saved 
at best we just tell them go to this church and when they get to the church if the church does not have a structure a teaching priest to now begin to help those people they are in trouble because when those people sit there the flesh wants to find expression and because there is no system to keep dealing with it i tell you eventually you are going to see all shades of trouble the headache that the man of god will go through because of people that are saved and they just pile them into the church no growth no development and this is how you keep having all this trouble everywhere are we blessed this is not my sermon or this is a burden let me just offload that one then we'll get to the sermon for tonight are we together discipleship therefore is the foundation for true and lasting transformation in individuals families institutions and nations let me repeat myself discipleship therefore by reason of the aforementioned discipleship therefore is the foundation for true and lasting transformation in individuals families institutions and nations we must restore the system of discipleship my second thought are you ready for the second one to be uninformed I wrote here is bad but to be misinformed is worse to be uninformed is bad ignorance is a terrible thing at any level to be uninformed is bad but to be misinformed is worse please write it and look up this is very true to be uninformed is very bad ignorance is terrible it can cost you a lot including your life but the most serious trouble is to be misinformed when you meet someone who is ignorant the person does not necessarily need renewal the person just needs information that produces transformation is that true but when you meet someone who is ill-informed or misinformed you need renewal first before you now begin the journey of transformation someone who has not begun a journey he does not need to turn back you just need to direct the person to the right place and he fires on but one who has veered off so far he will need to come back to that point before you now point him to the right direction this lead this leads me to this next point we must examine the content the content of our doctrines and the content we use to mentor people because i have spoken now about the need for discipleship but there are many people who are in trouble today because they submitted to discipleship they submitted to discipleship but the content was inaccurate largely unscriptural so in as much as we advocate discipleship to help people most people you only train people from from the residue of your own philosophies and your own ideologies and if your ideology is wrong as an individual as a parent as a man of god you will communicate that error to people now let me tell you this sincerity does not necessarily mean truthfulness just because people are sincere does not mean that they are right most of the error and the trouble the imbalances that come they come from sincere people especially the one that comes from we preachers we may be sincere and so most people believe those information in honor to the sincerity of the man of god not the truthfulness of the content i can i can teach a lie i can teach something that is imbalanced or false and just because you perceive me to be a sincere people a sincere person in honor to my sincerity you will now swallow up the error that i'm teaching i may be sincere but it does not automatically mean that what i'm saying is right 
more than sincerity we must obtain grace from god to seek truth what delivers is not sincerity he says ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free many sincere people are destroying the purposes of god many sincere people are destroying god's divine patterns and divine order so in addition to sincerity which is commendable we must press for truth the content of our mentorship must be scriptural it must be balanced it must be communicated with intention and intelligence to be able to raise and build a people of stature otherwise we'll keep having these shades of lopsidedness spiritual lopsidedness so two burdens tonight one is that at the back of every transformation national transformation regional family is the need for mentorship everybody here comes from a family many people here are parents we can start by being intentional don't just allow people do what they want to do allow children do what they do i know that we live in times where you know people just have their ideas but you see this bible is our manual for a life of victory let god be true and all men liars hallelujah praise the lord i prepared a powerful sermon i'm waiting for the day god will grant me grace to teach it i look forward to teaching it in a men's meeting or teaching it so let me give you a teaser it's on inheritance what exactly is an inheritance that's the teaser everybody will eventually hear it but there, there it was designed for fathers husbands leaders men so when the bible says a good man leaves an inheritance what does the bible say to leave because many of what we leave that we call inheritance is not inheritance show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter so the moment you find out that you are ignorant in an area and you are searching for light your first assignment is not a reception your first assignment is verification what i'm about to open my heart to is it truth indeed it takes a lot of time to submit yourself to knowledge it also takes a lot of time to undo the wrong that you have learned my greatest prayer as a man of god is not just for signs and wonders and miracles and the prophetic is that i do not teach god's people a lie and cause nations and millions of people to believe a lie and then after 10 20 years i now realize is the truth then i change alone and leave the people to suffer Are we together? So I remain committed by the privilege of God's grace to make sure that the truths that we hear and the truths that come from this altar are truths that are true indeed, scriptural, life applicable mysteries of the kingdom that will all together build the believer spiritually and then in every other sense this is why we are here the day we fail in this assignment there is no need for you to come here again because we'll be wasting your time that anytime you come and what you hear are not life applicable truths sound from scripture doctrinally balanced and communicated with intelligence there is no need doing any church again every other thing that is left is religion the greatest honor to your time and your sacrifice while you sit here people come right from 
you know, whatever time, the greatest honor is to make sure that we as ministers of the gospel do our best within the, the boundary of the grace that has been given to us. We ourselves are students in the school of the spirit. But you see, the, this is where the mystery of the body of Christ comes. So that the dimension you do not see clearly, if you sustain the humility of heart, there is another angle to it that can help you to find balance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now for the word tonight. Please pray in one minute. Lord, grant me grace. Open my eyes to the mystery that will come from heaven. My life is about to change in the name of Jesus. My destiny is about to be transformed. Truth is coming to me. It says, ride prosperously because of truth. Hallelujah. Tonight I bring you a mystery that will transform your life in no small way. I bring you a kingdom truth that has been responsible for the enviable rising and excelling of men in the kingdom. Remember the Lord gave an instruction and for those of you who are just connecting today, we are teaching truths that relates to the graces that are at work in this house to the end that we become partakers of this grace through light through knowledge more than just impartation of anointing the knowledge that sponsors the coming and the staying and even the multiplication of those graces is what we've been dispensing are we together now so impartation is almost useless when there is no knowledge base to receive that that power when you just lay hands on people or just transfer anointings it's like pouring water in a cup that has a hole or pouring water on the ground it may not stay knowledge spiritual illumination becomes a container that receives that impartation that way it will stay and it will not only stay it will multiply are we together praise the lord this is one of the secrets that god taught me I have watched it in the life of great people. I have seen it in the Bible. I have watched those who violated this principle pay for it. I have watched people who honored this principle rise. And it is my prayer and my sincere desire tonight that God will find somebody in this place who will place value on this mystery and that you will rise in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ the lifting power of true humility write it down please the lifting power of true humility i want to share with you a very deep mystery tonight please pay attention don't allow anyone distract you a global family avoid any distraction and just settle down with jesus and let us learn the ways of the kingdom Let's access the keys and the mysteries that are responsible for extraordinary, supernatural growth, supernatural increase in this kingdom. Hallelujah. The lifting power of true humility. The goal of this discussion tonight is to connect believers to and with the grace for lifting by exposing the danger of pride and revealing to you from scripture the character and the excellency of a life of true humility praise the name of the lord three scriptures and we'll begin we'll begin our discussion tonight james chapter 4 and verse 6 James chapter 4 and verse 6. The Bible says, But he giveth more grace. Everyone say, More grace. More grace. He giveth more grace. The first information here is that whatever God gives you, He can give you more of it. 
that whatever God gives you is not the last level that he intends to give. Everything God gives is a seed that can be multiplied. Everything God gives, there is more of it. When God gives you wisdom, there can be more wisdom. When God gives you power, there can be more power. When God lifts you, there can be more lifting. So the first information, he giveth more. He giveth more. More membership. More revelation. More financial resources. More wisdom. More of his ability to keep you long. We call it longevity. Whatever comes from God that is given to you is not the last of it that he can give. He giveth more grace. He giveth more grace. This is a powerful information. That means anything that I need more of in my life, the Bible gives me a consolation that I can find more of it. There is a possibility for having more of everything that you currently have. There is a possibility for transiting beyond the current realm that you now occupy, spiritually, financially, physically, in leadership, in influence, etc. Are we together? He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, who is the he talking? The one who gives the more grace. Whatever the owner of anything is saying, you pay attention to it if you really want it. So the giver of this more grace says, God resisted the proud. But he gives grace. So first information, he gives more grace. Second information, he tells you the candidate he gives that more grace to. Are we together now? He gives it more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but he giveth more grace. In any case, both the proud and the humble have something that comes from God to them. Are you seeing it now? Proud people have, some, they have something that comes to them from God. The Bible says resistance. God can bring resistance to a man's life. And then the Bible says for the humble... He brings more grace. Second scripture, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. Philippians 2 and verse 3. Let me read very quickly. Let nothing be done, it says, through strife or vain glory. Very interesting expression. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves let me repeat it one more time let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves very self-explanatory very clear that nothing be done in strife or vain glory but in lowliness it tells you that anything is truly profitable when it is done in lowliness of mind last scripture First Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. The apostle is teaching now. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. Here's what he says. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God. Why? That he may exalt you. Someone say exaltation. One more time say exaltation. It says, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Let's begin our discussion. I want to start with a concept that I call the, the deceitfulness of pride. Let's examine the subject of pride. Exactly is pride. And why is it such a serious issue in my life and in your life? Why do we have to battle and wrestle with this concept, this idea of pride? Where did it come from? Why is pride, you know, negative habits, but this pride thing? It seems to have a bulldog strength that holds on to, I like us to deal with the subject of pride dimension and then the second the psychological dimension because when it has to do with pride demon spirits come to fortify a belief system so that they cause you to remain in that state you see there for that spirit to be fruitful in the life of its victim 
as with the manifestation of all other spirits, the Lord at all is condition dependent, including the Holy Spirit. No spirit can veto into man and just begin to carry out activities of that spirit. Pride is one of them. If you are together, say Amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the idea of pride and how deadly and how dangerous it is. So it talks about pride, it always connects it with destruction, it always connects it with folly, it always connects it with all kinds of things. There is no mention of pride and lifting together. There is no mention of pride and increase together. From Genesis to Revelation, Every time the Bible mentions pride, either directly in scripture or through the similitude of a story or in parable, the ones who are victims of that pride, if there is no repentance and there is no brokenness and conversion, they will always end up worse than the story started with them. Pride, a killer, a destroyer of many destinies today. Many destinies have not only remained at that level but gone down shamefully so for many because of this danger of pride. Are we together? Now, I want to just delve a bit into a concept of the human nature. Let's discuss a bit on psychology and then I'll get back to my teaching. This is very important. You cannot truly, truly understand pride until you understand the human nature. Please pay attention. We are here to learn. The church of God is an institution of learning scriptural context, but we borrow fields of study and intelligence to help give credence to what we are discussing. Are we together now? Many believers think that all it takes to being free from some of these things is just knowing that God delivers and God sets free. You have to understand pride from a psychological dimension. What, why do people fall victim of this thing that the Bible calls pride? You must understand the reality of the human nature. Please follow me very carefully as we open up ourselves to ourselves to understand what is the motivation behind the activities that we do. Hallelujah. I studied this years ago and it changed my life and I had the honor of looking through it again whilst preparing for this note. Now, every human being, the Bible tells us that man is tripartite in expression. Man is a spirit, the Bible says. And that spirit lives in a body and connecting that spirit and body is a faculty that we call the mind. Is that true? That the spirit in partnership with the mind is what you call a soul. Are we together now? Yes. And that the mind of, of man has three compartments. Psychologists tell us and even the Bible attests to that. The will, emotions and intellect. And that all of these faculties of sp expression help to, they help man to, to interact with this duality of realms. That even though man is in the physical, he can interact with the realm of the spirit or any realm above the three-dimensional realm by the means of these faculties. If the mind were to be taken away from the man, there will be a disconnect between the body and the spirit. And we know that the body is merely an instrument of execution. Is that true? The body does not have a will on its own. Religion agrees to that. Science agrees to that. The body in itself does not have any power to execute. That is the reason why when a spirit leaves a body, that body lies lifeless and begins to deteriorate and begins to decompose because it has no life and power on its own. The body is merely a biological instrument that executes realities that have been agreed upon the spirit through the faculties of the mind. This is very important. You have to understand that men are not just spirits. Please listen. Men are not just spirits. They interact with this realm through the mind that means there is a psychological composition to every man born of a woman there is a psychological composition to every man born of a woman now across several colleges 
universities there have been all kinds of psychologists who have done all kinds of research work on man this entity called man they have approached it from a sociological standpoint they have approached it from a religious standpoint they have approached it from a biological standpoint and attempts to unravel this entity called man to be able to study what it is that is responsible for some of the ills that happen to men and so different people have written all kinds of dissertations uh, in an attempt to contribute to this knowledge and one of them would be would take for reference just one of them a behavioral psychologist a professor called abraham maslow abraham harold maslow and he was a behavioral psychologist he was a professor of psychology and he lived from 1908 to 1970 he postulated a theory called the theory of motivation that eventually brought what we have known in the psychology world today as the hierarchy of needs abraham maslow he brought the hierarchy of needs it was an attempt to describe human behavior he wanted to describe the motivation behind the activities of men on earth so that he would now be able to help us make sense of why men do what they do why men act the way they act why men go where they go are we together now this was a very very successful work because it helped to frame intelligence businesses today run on these principles their understanding of human psychology has helped them to build products help them to build all kinds of platforms based on this so we're going to look at it very briefly he postulated a theory of the theory of um, needs the hierarchy of needs I meant to say this is very important the theory of motivation and from it came the hierarchy of needs I won't dwell so much I just want to give us um, a basic understanding now there are all kinds of intelligent people here intellectuals and um, I'm not speaking as a professor or authority I was just a good student who studied some of this in an attempt to prepare a message and preach I have to put that disclaimer we live in a world that is very civilized now so please understand that I'm not teaching as any authority with any qualification around psychology we are interacting with the whole world I am merely a student who as an attempt in an attempt to make sure that I help my people understand the gospel and this dimension I delved into that understanding to bring forth something is that true that will help you relate to it so this is very important thank you hallelujah but then you can trust what i'm saying because they are not my ideas this is well researched by god's grace we are serious people we are very serious people in the name of jesus christ now please media help me i i gave the media an assignment if you can project this a little this is a pyramid that was a representation of maslow's maslow's hierarchy of needs it was an attempt to show the motivation behind human behavior from the greatest to the least that means that all men are driven by these factors right there at the base of the pyramid we have the greatest need of man he calls it psychological needs another word for it is basic needs so at the base of the pyramid the largest part of the pyramid for those of you who i hope that you're seeing it is wide and clear enough but just to touch on them he says that all men the urgency that men express in their lives is primarily to be able to achieve their psychological or basic needs first that means in order of priority a dying man is not looking for real estate a dying man is looking for air to breathe when he can breathe air then he needs water when he finds water he can now find food is that true when he can now find food he now realizes he's naked and he wants clothes are you seeing now in that order of priority if he has clothes he now realizes that he needs shelter so he's saying that in order of priority the man who is looking for a house if you strip that man naked the issue of house becomes a non-issue he tries to cover his nakedness are we together now if that man who is naked is so thirsty 
to the point of death, he will not mind nakedness again. Because the thirst becomes a priority. Is that true? And the man who is hungry and thirsty, if something happens and he's going to be starved of air, he does not mind hunger. He first wants to live. So Abraham Maslow was saying that there is a motivation behind human needs. All men, their first need is the basic need or the psychological need. I will show you how this connects to pride. Psychological needs or basic needs include the biological requirements for human survival. That is the first most important need in the flesh now of every man. The need for air, the need for water, the need for food, the need for shelter, the need for sleep, the need for clothing. All of these things come under the basic needs. By basic there, it means they are foundational and any other thing can fail but this. Men will kill to make sure they have this. Men will fight one another to make sure they have this. Are we together? Quickly, let's go to the second part of the pyramid in ascending order. The second, you see it from there, is called safety needs. That means when your basic needs are met and you don't have a problem with food again, you don't have a problem with shelter, you don't have a problem with um, sleep or clothing, your needs, your motivation now increases. Your next need becomes your safety needs. Security and safety now becomes your priority. People now want to experience control, predictability, and order in their lives. So you now start thinking of employment. You now start thinking of your health. You now start thinking of personal security. There are people today who are not thinking of employment. They are thinking survival. There are people today who are not thinking health. It's amazing how that as we grow, once upon a time in my life, I would never think about health. To stay healthy, avoid this food. I mean, the, the issue is to make sure that you eat well and you are happy. But there is a level you get to where that is solved. Now you have to need a gym. Now you have to need a gym instructor to help you manage your health. Why? Because those needs arise. Is that true? They now tell you, avoid this, avoid that, avoid that for the sake of your health. So the next need is your safety need. You want control and predict it. Nobody just comes to waste your life. Now, if you have this in place, the third part of the pyramid, please, let's hurry up. The third is called esteem. Okay, um, okay this one says belongingness and love needs. I call it love and acceptance needs. Isn't it amazing? It starts with basic needs. You don't want to die. Once you've solved that, then you now move to security needs once security needs are in place the next is now the need for love and acceptance we call them social needs generally the need to feel loved the need to feel accepted so now you begin to pay attention to relationships friendships family and you now want to connect to groups all kinds of groups and clubs and societies because you want that sense of belonging, you want that sense of acceptance. Notice the ascension, that the basic and most desperate of your need is to eat, sleep. Once that is solved, the needs increase. The need for security and safety. Once that is solved, the next need is the need for love and acceptance through relationships and all kinds of platforms. The moment that is solved, then, now, please look up. This is where trouble begins in your life. This is a very powerful representation. Most of the, the first, second, and third doesn't create so much trouble in your life. Real trouble starts from the fourth part of the, the pyramid. It's called esteem needs. The fourth part of the pyramid is called esteem needs. What does that mean? The need for the esteem for oneself and the need to find respect from others what you call reputation reputation is a description of people's perception of you at this point now you are not looking for your basic needs again your security needs have been met your social needs have also been met the next thing that is left is your ego and your reputation before yourself and before men this is where trouble starts you need to understand this so that as you are training people in leadership in your company in ministry understand that they are growing a time will come if you do not know how to manage this you are going to be in trouble 
because a time will come the people you are raising will not need food again the people in your company the staff may have started as maybe even a security person somewhere opening and closing the gates but eventually as they begin to rise you see that their needs and their priorities shift many parents do not understand the transitions in the behavior of their children now if you understand this you see the way your child behaves if he's receiving school fees from you it's not the same way your child behaves now if he's earning a scholarship of hundreds of thousands of naira or dollars you see that the priorities change maslow helped us to put this thing in perspective let's look very quickly esteem needs at this point people begin to want independence and they begin to pay attention to achievement what gives you fulfillment at this level is not eating well it's not driving a car you want to achieve goals and then you want a sense of independence you do not want to be under the hold of anybody or anything are we still together shout amen, amen. i assume your silence is that you are really understanding the thing and you are allowing it to absorb into your spirit esteem needs at this point you begin to be sensitive to everything titles sensitive to recognition sensitive to who says what remember the five-year-old version of you before that time the ten-year-old version of you before that time has no peace there are people here today their concern is simply to come and hear the gospel press into Christ that it doesn't matter whether they are wearing an oversized cloth or not it doesn't matter whether what they are wearing is torn or not because according to Maslow the need for survival they are at the basic level now let the word keep coming the word keeps translating you as you are getting results what happens eventually you will leave the first part of the pyramid you will now rise to safety needs I'm tired of staying in a house with five or six or ten people. I think I need my own place now. Security and safety. Is that true? Yes. Esteem needs. The need for independence. The need for status. The need for prestige. This is why people join all kinds of clubs and societies. This is why people begin to come up with all kinds of things that help to concretize the, their relevance relevance and status and prestige and reputation are the key words at this level and then the fifth is called self-actualization needs self-actualization needs the need for fulfillment and the need for legacy for instance when you see someone who is at age 80 or 90 notice how everything reverses at age 80 or 90 the gentleman does not care again or the man the old man does not care whether his hair is combed he does not care whether he zips his trouser he does not care whether the buttons are in place he sits with you and says young man let me teach you something 45 years ago this is what happened and while you are looking at him it will be foolish of you as a young man to look at the person and say sorry the you're, you're putting this shoe is supposed to be this way and he says so that is what your focus is on because at that level it is legacy his pride is not what he does with himself or to himself again his pride is the people that he's able to raise that become instruments of continuity notice how this transition happens in your life if you flog your child male or female your teenage child especially in the presence of anyone that is a huge embarrassment you would have taught something but you see an adult who fall down on the road and stand up and dust himself like nothing happened because he's looking for a job he has three children and he needs to sort things out that shame that he used to have as a little boy has gone because of other needs and other serious priorities abraham mashlo final recap and we'll get back to the teaching arranged in order of priority ascending order psychological or basic needs and then safety needs love and acceptance needs esteem needs self-actualization needs praise the name of the lord now please write this down thank you write this down i appreciate thank you thank you let's get to work thank you 
Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. I appreciate you. Now, write this down. The highest psychological need, we teach this in our school of ministry, the highest psychological need of all men, please write it and tie it in the name of Jesus. May you never forget, this is the golden rule that governs us. The highest psychological need of all men is the need to be loved, accepted, celebrated, and appreciated. Please write it down. The highest psychological need of all men, beloved, the need to be accepted, the need to be celebrated, and the need to be appreciated. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together now? Now, listen to me. Sir, everyone, let her come. I don't know her, but please come. And then you, my friend, the white man, please come. Let him come too. Come, sir. Please, if you can. Don't be embarrassed. Please come. Come. Nothing to embarrass you at all. Please come, ma. Let's keep celebrating them. Just take it easy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know that you would need this. Thank you, ma. God bless you. Please come, sir. Please come. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand. Keep clapping till I ask you to stop. Keep clapping. Don't stop. Keep clapping. Now, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You, don't, you may not know them. And you don't even know what they have done. But your clap has fulfilled this law. The need, whatever it is that you have done, what they receive from your club is that I am loved. Am I right, sirs? Am I right, ma? I am accepted. Is that true? I am appreciated and celebrated. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just listen, listen, listen. We're learning something. Now, you come and talk to this woman and tell her you don't like me and see what she will do to you. Are we together now? Yes. Because... We have given her a perception that we love you, we honor you, sir and ma, and we ask them to come to this altar, and we ask everyone to stand, and then to applaud them. Are we together now? Chances are that this, our mother here, and this, our uncle here, may not hate me easily. Are you seeing that now? Why? Because the memory of my honor fulfilling that psychological condition will not give them the room now imagine let's reverse it imagine that as our mother and our uncle were coming up here we asked them to come out and i started shouting at them respectfully speaking i said i don't know who you are but do you know i'm a man of god hurry up and don't waste my time come and stand here before i curse you now they may keep quiet now watch this and then I tell the man, you come stand, stand. And I push them and push and nobody helps her up. And she stands here. And when I'm done with my example, I say, you can go. And I just push them like I'm pushing animals. Can I tell you this? It is possible that next week you would never see them here again. Now you understand what I say. The highest psychological need of any man, including the one looking at me, is the need to feel loved, the need to feel appreciated the need to feel celebrated and the need to feel what's the last one accepted people join occult groups because they want acceptance people fight and belong to groups why do people get angry when you don't invite them for festivities because they receive a perception through your non-invitation that you don't place value on them are we together now Please let's celebrate our mother. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Please help them down. Keep clapping until they go down. You've started. Finish it well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Are we together? Koinonia, please sit down. Let's continue now. 
the psychological build up of man so the highest psychological need of all men is the need to feel loved or beloved accepted celebrated and appreciated is that true write this down we begin our teaching on pride now before i define pride let me tell you this a very important information pride is rooted in deep insecurity fear powerlessness and unworthiness pride is rooted in the feeling you can add the feeling pride intrinsically pride from a psychological angle is rooted in the feeling of deep insecurity fear a sense of powerlessness and unworthiness 95 percent of all manifestations of pride are a cover-up for these conditions you have to understand this pride is rooted in a deep sense or a deep feeling of insecurity fear powerlessness and unworthiness that means if i feel insecure intrinsically if i live in fear if i feel i am powerless and not in control of people or circumstances if i feel unworthy i will have to devise a psychological way of covering that condition the name of that cover-up is pride are we together now yes so that intrinsically largely so may not be always the case but almost always anywhere you truly find pride behind the scenes is an expression of insecurity an expression of fear an expression of powerlessness or lack of control and an expression of unworthiness so people create that psychological cover they try to assume an attitude of boldness intimidate or bully others but behind the scenes ask those who are legal practitioners ask those who operate as security people all around they will tell you when you catch some of these people who are involved in all kinds of societal violence once you sit with them down after dealing with them punishing them when they are sure that destruction is imminent they would break down and start crying and you now tell them but why do you do this and then they will begin to tell you nobody loves me i came from a background where this so most of that thing is a cover-up an attempt to wrongly manage insecurity an attempt to wrongly manage fear an attempt to wrongly manage a sense of powerlessness and an attempt to manage unworthiness are we together now yes we're dealing with the deceitfulness of pride four or five scriptures and then i will tell you or let me just define pride and then we'll look at these scriptures please write this down three definitions we're looking at pride do not forget our topic tonight the lifting power of true humility the first definition of pride is a lust for the praises of men what is a lust what is lost on ungodly inordinate affinity a lust for the praises of men pride number two the second definition a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance merit or superiority don't worry i'll take it again a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity comma importance comma merit or superiority whether as cherished in the mind or as displayed in conduct 
I'll take it one last time. Pride, a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity, importance, merit, or superiority, whether cherished in the mind or displayed in conduct. Please write it and look up. You can see that there are two expressions to this definition. On one hand, it can be a perception that is cherished in the mind. It never finds physical visibility. And then the second, you can, it can be vocally expressed in conduct. When pride is expressed, we call it boastfulness. But just because whether pride is expressed or not, pride is pride. Are we together? So a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity, importance, merit or superiority, whether as cherished in the mind or displayed in conduct. Let me give you my own definition now. The third definition. What is pride? A feeling of being better than others on the strength of one's perception or obvious achievements. A feeling of being better than others on the strength of one's perception. That means just something that is worked up in your mind or in the presence of obvious achievements. A feeling that you are better than others on the strength of your obvious achievement or just something that exists in the realm of your mind. So pride, the lust for the praises of men. Number two, inordinate opinion of oneself. Number three, the feeling of being better than others. The following scriptures. Number one, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 12. Very instructive scriptures. Please let's pay attention. The Lord is teaching us. Can we read together as a family of faith? If you can see it projected, we read one, two, three. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. That's another word for pride. And before honor is humility. Wow. That means every time you see pride, pride is only a John the Baptist to something that is coming. That before pride, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. Is that true? And it says before honor is humility. Very powerful scripture. That anytime you see pride, it did not come alone. There is something it is dragging with it. And what it is dragging is destruction. So the end of all who are and remain in pride is destruction. Scripture number 2. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. The Bible again here says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Can you see that now? In the mouth of two or three witnesses, the Bible says a matter is established. So pride goes before destruction. It means that when Satan wants to destroy a man, wants to destroy a people, the first thing that happens is that he introduces pride to their lives. And in that state of pride, destruction is beginning to form over their lives and their destinies. The third scripture, Proverbs 29 and verse 23. Proverbs 29 and verse 23. I'd like us to read together if you do not mind. Ready? Please read. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. One more time, please. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. This is very powerful. Many people today, I tell you the truth, have destroyed enviable destinies because of this danger and this demon and this cancer of pride. It has brought down kings. It has brought down nobles. It has brought down men of God. As it has such potent power to destroy a man's future. Pride. Hallelujah. 
when the devil wants to do that the highest psychological need of all men is the need to be loved to be valued to be celebrated but there are there is men the bible tells us that that state is a state that only leads to destruction let me say this sincerely we live in a celebrity world today we live in a world of superstars nothing wrong with excelling get there it does not matter they just want to get to a position where the whole world can celebrate them in ministry in business in career whatever it is and so people continue to make all kinds of compromises it does not matter what is done or not done the most important thing is this fame i must have it in ministry i found out that when you can prophesy when you can preach well they may say people respect you so it doesn't matter how and where i must make sure that i get to that position most times when people watch a successful person there is this there is this sense of admiration they look at everything they look at your designers if you're wearing one they look at your personal the car they look at everything and most times people just sit and create a world of 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 ambition and lust from what they are seeing and they come up with all kinds of false vows and say i must be like this I must do this i must do that and it becomes a negative motivation negative motivation inordinate affection for the praise of men whether they are lying whether they are flattering you you just want to hear it this was what destroyed lucifer lucifer the son of the morning we're going to look at examples of pride from scripture but this is what destroyed that one cherub that covereth. When the Lord began to teach me about pride, every day till today and till tomorrow, can I tell you this? Let me challenge you. There are issues that when we are discussing, you can easily say, ah, no, 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 no. When you talk of character and moral excellence, you can say, oh, no, that's, that's me. Oh, that, that does not concern me. When we talk of witchcraft and manipulation, oh, that does not concern me. When we talk about money and other things, oh, that does not concern me. But the subject of pride and humility, there is nobody... This, these are the kind of teachings that there is no tell them. It's the kind of teaching that when they are done, from the preacher himself to everybody, you cry and roll before God and say, Lord, help me. Because pride is a killer. It has such penetrating power. The most fortified heart, it can creep into that heart until it destroys you. Can I tell you this? For the sake of this lecture tonight, I separated my angles of discussing pride in two. Number one, spiritual pride. Number two, the pride of life. Let me talk about this. There are the two aspects of pride that I see that have almost damaged the lives of people. Why am I teaching this? Out of love. Because this is the condition to access exaltation. You want to be exalted in this kingdom, there is a mystery that controls it. Let's look at spiritual pride. Spiritual pride. In the book of Revelation, the Bible, when John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, please look up. There were seven churches. Now, theologically speaking, those were, they were real churches like that, scattered across Asia Minor. And there were warnings that were given to those churches. But prophetically speaking, it was a message to the entire church. Is that true? And one of the churches, please turn with me to Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14. One of the churches is called the Laodicean church. The Laodicean church receive an instruction that is applicable for our lives today and for everyone who wants to remain relevant in the program of god relevant in influence relevant and to consistently be exalted it says and unto the angel of the church of the laodiceans right these things saith the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God. Uh-huh. It says, I know thy works. 
So he's cautioning them now. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and are neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. 17. Because thou sayest, what made you cold? This is the basis. Thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods. I have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. This here you see is about the most painful rebuke of all the seven churches. For the rest he will first commend them. You have done this, except this, just work on this. But when it came to the Laodicean church, there was no commendation. It was the rod immediately. Thou sayest, I am rich. I am increased with goods. Who does this look like in the Bible? Who made such a statement? Lucifer himself. The Laodicean syndrome is a Luciferian syndrome. I am rich, he says, increased with goods. And have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Next verse. We are reading to 19. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That thou mightest be rich. And white raiment that thou mightest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eyes self. That thou may see. 19. As many as I love. Wow. Can you see that there is a special love he had for the Laodicean church. That was why he didn't even have time to commend anything. He just went straight to rebuke them. And at the end he said, I'm doing this because I love you. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. He says, be zealous therefore and repent. Luke chapter 18 from verse 11. Jesus taught us a very powerful lesson to describe humility and pride. Three or four verses full of truth from the lips of the master himself. Ready? Please look up. The Pharisees stood and prayed to us. Jesus is giving um, a, a parable now to explain something. And he spoke about two men. One a Pharisee, one an ordinary person. The Pharisees stood and prayed to us with himself. God, I thank thee, he said, that I am not as the other men are. This is the man praying now. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican, he's praying. Next verse. I fast twice in a week. Everybody says spiritual pride. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 14. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Jesus is teaching spiritual pride can i tell you this i can tell you by experience and i can tell you from scripture if god does not help you spiritual growth and spiritual excellence can turn and tilt you to the other side of the pendulum and bring your destruction when you begin to access revelation and insight when god begins to prosper your spiritual work and us i tell you the, <clears throat> Pride, if, if God does not help you to create a system where you cry before Him daily, has destroyed many men of God, respectfully speaking. This has destroyed many great leaders. This has destroyed many great business spiritual progress. And many times, you can grow in revelation, grow in power to the point that you are no longer with us, step by step. And He's still helping us today spiritual pride the moment you feel you are the only one god is using apostle joshua selman it is only in koinonia god is blessing people apostle joshua selman 
you know while i was preparing this message i had to put my head and rest and think i have said this to you and i say it out of every sense of responsibility truly without exaggeration now it's even more i manage an average of say 800 plus text messages in a day and many of them like this apostle of the most high god i have searched men of god are you if you actually believe that thing let, i'm talking to myself now if i actually believe that thing i'm not only stupid but i'm under an attack as as funny and childish as what i'm saying is there are some of you who will believe it absolutely and go out of your way to create systems that reinforce those kinds of things. Many of us have gathered psychophants in our lives today because they have mastered us that this is what we want to hear. Even if you are entering the pit, you want people who gather around you. Once they can massage your ego, they have access to your life, access to your inner circle until you, they destroy you and they will turn back and show people that this is where he died. Listen to me. You've heard me say this. You know you are being transformed by the Holy Ghost when there is humility connected to your growth. The moment you begin to trade humility for revelation, you are in trouble. Now, this, I say this with every sense of love and respect. This is one of the greatest fear for my generation of ministers. You see it in Africa. One of the biggest mistakes, especially with the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in Africa generally and world over, is that the little that God has done and is doing with our lives is so garnished with a lot of pride. It even damages the beautiful thing that is there. That is not even much relative to what God wants to do. Are we together? Chances are that because of what God is doing in a ministry like this and how God continues to glorify himself, we can go back and begin to destroy ourselves with that sense of pride. How do you know you are walking in pride? When you believe, listen to me, when you believe that there are certain things you are the only one who can do and the only one who can bring is the mistake of Elijah. Elijah came to God and said, God, every other person has deserted you. Every other person does not like you. I am the only one. That's a nonsense. What are you saying? There are 7,000 others. How many preachers today, we preachers, I don't say them, we preachers, how many of us preachers today actually sit down and believe that without us, God's purposes will fail? Look at that level of pride. There are people who stand and speak as if every other person has backsliding. Every other person does not love the Lord. We must be careful. There is destruction that we are programming. The one who built the church is still alive. And his jealousy will make sure he defends his work to the end. Can I tell you this? As a man of God, I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting people. And God many times opens my eyes and I'm able to see these people they themselves do not know how mighty they are in the spirit I shared with you a story one time that I was pre preaching at a PFN crusade in Kano and I was calling people out by word of knowledge ministering to people you know people were watching with wonder the anointing and all kinds of things and then I called this woman out and when the woman came out she was an intercessor and then she told me that every 15 days she finishes her Bible, a house her Bible, 15 days without fail. And yet they are not on air. Yet they are not the Joshua Selmans who sit in front. And yet we can have the audacity to believe that we are the only ones God is using. Not so. My brothers, God has a mighty army. Some of them mighty and greater than the Joshua Selmans you celebrate. Nobody knows them yet. Some of them are hiding in the school of the spirit. God is using our own life to teach them lessons and train them. We must have the maturity, the wisdom, and the spirituality to know this. Are you learning something tonight? Yes. Spiritual pride. People bully one another across the body of Christ today with Rema, Revelation, 
many people, this is what led them into divination and some of these things now. Pray from prayer groups, you go to different campuses now, you see things that make you afraid. Everybody's trying to search for anything. Once there is Greek, Hebrew, and Latin, and you conjoy, then the spiritual pride that comes from account of prayer prowess. Once I can pray two hours, three hours, four hours, you can bully others to make it look you are not spiritual. <sighs> then crowd. Once you have crowd inside and outside, we are the only ones God is using. Brothers and sisters, it is not true. It is an attack from the pit of hell. There is such a thing as spiritual pride. The more you see the glory of God, can I tell you this? The more you are exposed to God, I'm telling you the more you see your inadequacy before Him and the need to remain humble. Many times when I enter and I come to sit and I watch people looking at me in my mind, I'm just saying, Oh God, Someone was at a pastor's conference. It's a story that I heard years ago. They were at a pastor's conference. Ministers were praying. And our father in the Lord, Baba Deboe, was there. And when it was time to pray, mass prayer, everybody was praying. And then the man had the opportunity to lie down not too far, as he said, from Baba Deboe. And pastors were praying, Lord, the grace on this ministry must come upon my life. I'm tired of 300 members. I'm tired of others' power. And when he came close, for more than one hour or so, he said, all that Baba Deboy was saying is, Mercy, O oh God. Mercy, O oh God. Mercy, O oh God. That's how you know people who have grown. Others who just came, Lord, fire. Lord, bring partners now. Why do I have this quality of sheep? Bring people who can help me and, and change this and stop this work from being hard. Someone else is crying and say, Lord, mercy, keep me to the end. Mercy, the humility it takes to finish. Can I tell you this? It is a caution that God gave me. And I continue to obtain grace from God to stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit. That as He opens new graces and new vistas of spiritual reality that we are patient with people today many people come who are just starting ministry and they come apostle and sometimes they almost want to worship you can i tell you this spiritual pride works in two angles there is the one you create the people who praise you by yourself you praise yourself but there, there are others you will not create it but when you see it you will sap that you will enjoy it like squeezing an orange until there is nothing left. It's still pride. There are times that you have to go out of your way to thank them and say thank you for this. But please be careful. There are things people want to do in my life today. If I'm to allow people to do everything they want to do in my life, it will almost become another religion. People will now almost worship Joshua Selman. Ah, may I not live to see that day oh. In the name of Jesus Christ. Looking at me now and following online, many of you, the devil is already programming this. Spiritual pride. That's what has driven many people to go on 40 days dry. 10 days dry. You ask them why. They tell you, no, we started ministry with these guys. I can't remain like this. And you think it's a very nice motivation. No, I can't be. Some of you are listening to me. Some of you, that's what even brought you here. And God is looking at the corruption in your heart. There's nothing wrong with prayer and fasting. Don't get me wrong. But that that motif is already dead. It's already gone. Spiritual pride. Why do you think people go to dabble into all sorts of demonic things? It is because people are looking for a name. spiritual pride take it down for me let me sing that sinat song the more i know you the more i want to know you jesus more of you the more i know you the more i want to know you jesus more of you the more I see you 
the more I want to see you, Jesus, more of you. Listen, historically speaking, do you know, and I say this with every sense of respect, one of God's generals, I may not mention his name, because I'm speaking to a global audience. But one of these generals, that was one of the things that brought him down. He was a mighty general of God. Used of God powerfully. But he got to a point where people told him, you are one of these prophets, Elijah specifically. And when they said that for a while, he said, no, 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 our glory be to God. I don't mean the spirit of Elijah. Elijah incarnate. You are that Elijah that Revelation say would come again. Can I tell you this? In the state of pride, there is nothing you will not believe. That's why it's good to ask God for mercy. I want more of you. I want more of you. Jesus, the more I know you, the more I want to know you. Jesus, more of you. Listen, and eventually they now made him believe that he was Elijah. And after a while, he started believing it. And he went and saw the regalia. At that time, there was no social media. So you would not really know what God was doing at the other side of the world. It was at that time that the woman that we call Maria Woodward Eater, God now lifted her. And when that man heard that God was using someone outside of him, he persecuted that woman seriously. Number one, that she was a woman. Number two, who are you for God to use you? I'm the only one that God is using here. And thank God he served God, but he did not finish well. The things that are written aforetime, they are for our learning. So that we, through the comfort of scripture, some of these people have allowed their scars to be seen, not to condemn them. We honor them in life and even in death for the contribution that they brought. But there are lessons for us to learn. There is nobody destroyed who stands with the potential of destruction. Keep going. As God is lifting you spiritually, Apostle Joshua Selman. You know, sometimes I watch with shock and wonder. It's almost, it's even embarrassing as I'm saying it now. Please forgive me. But I mean, people can give you this godlike. I know it's a sincere way to honor you. There's nothing wrong with that. Except that sometimes people can give you all this description and all this spiritual paraphernalia. And if you are not careful, you will fall into it with joy. Joshua Selman. I can stand now and begin to pray. And the power of God moves in this place. And people are blessed. Spiritual pride. On account of the progress you are making in the spirit. On account of the fact that God it has so pleased him by his sheer mercy and grace. To lift you to a position where you now represent the voice of God to a generation. I warn myself every day. God can do without you. God can do without you. Mr. Man, you are a man. You are only of God. Lord, if you're lifting someone in this city, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're healing someone in this city, please don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, if you're changing someone in this city, don't do it without me. I submit to you by God. There are many men of God. There are many people who need a retreat fast. 
to go back and break down before God and say, my maker and my king, everything I ever have, it came from you. And thank God for the spirit of revelation. Thank God for the ability to minister healing. Thank God for the nations who are hearing what we are doing. But Lord, I pray, the pride that comes based on spiritual achievements, may it never, never, never. While you are saying it, you will look like a fool. But you are already signing your relevance for the next move of God. See, this is why you see a lot of people used by God. And then a time comes, you see another move of God. They are still alive. And yet you see, this is not backsliding. It just looks like God says, no, no, no. I can't make you do with this again. Some of you here are leaders over small prayer groups. You are already copying all kinds of nonsense. It doesn't matter even if it's from me. We have to be careful the things we are learning. Pride that destroys people. It is as a result of this pride that dishonor has crept into the body. Everybody is correcting everybody. Someone who has not even started ministry. Standing at the back of the tree and calling fathers and insulting everybody. Spiritual pride. Till today when I have the honor and the privilege of meeting any of our fathers in the faith or anyone who has gone ahead. It does not matter what they are saying. I sit down quietly as if I do not know anything in ministry. I submit to you brothers and sisters and people of God. The man talking to you is not stupid. By the grace of God, forgive me if I sound arrogant. I have seen honor. I have seen the grace of God. I have seen Jesus. I have stood before kings. I know what it means to have spiritual progress. God has helped me. But, the way up is to remain on your knees. Many of you are simple. You are not humble. Simplicity is not humility. Humility is not refusing to acknowledge what God has done in your life. No. No. I remember one time years ago when I finished that preaching, someone sent me a text and said, I've been calling you and you did not pick. I said, look, they said I'm humble, not stupid. Do you know my activities? Don't, don't let people blackmail you emotionally just because you said you are humble. No. But can I tell you the truth? My brothers and my sisters, please listen to me. Pride based on spiritual achievement. God forbid, but if I die today, I sleep and I do not wake up. It will not change what God is doing on earth. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Never get to a point in your life where you believe God cannot do without you. And he says, really? No. It is a privilege beyond imagination to be part of God's program. It is a privilege to help build and bless people. It is a privilege to be granted the gift of influence and access. It is, it is a privilege. There are many things today that I know from this scripture. I did not study it. It's the spirit of revelation that brought it. I cannot take credit for it. There are things that I told you I have seen people who have fasted and prayed more than me. Years ago, a gentleman, most times when people are fasting, sometimes I join them and round it up with them. There was a gentleman who fasted for 400 days, 6 to 6. I rounded up the 400 day with him. And yet that person did not carry any power. More than the spiritual activities we are doing. Believe me, it is the mercy of God. I know people who have studied more books about church growth than me. I know people who have gone to different theological seminaries. I know people who have had the opportunity. They have... So the little and the bits that God does in and through our lives, as we ascend this mountain spiritually, may we ever remain humble.
And I'm saying this to those who are also leaders in this ministry or leaders all around. We have to learn this. Men can clap for you, that is important. But you must get to a point where you say, this is enough. My life is to see Jesus glorified. Because you see, there's something the anointing and the glory of God does upon a man. It makes it look like you are not human again. And when people stand in awe of that glory, that majesty, the wisdom that comes from God, many times they begin to look for sincere ways of expressing honor and appreciation to you. You are the one who needs to be wise to know when it has gone beyond honor into something else and to lovingly draw that line and keep that line drawn. Are we together? Everybody say spiritual pride. Please shout it. Say spiritual pride. God is speaking to us right now. There are people who have not been patient with younger ministers as they rise because of pride. I've told you this. When you are mentoring and raising people, part of the responsibility of fatherhood is that you must be able to take a lot of nonsense from people as they are growing. You must know and be patient with people the same way God was patient with us. Spiritual pride, revelation, rema, healing, prophecy, Africa. I speak to you by the voice of the Spirit. Men and women of God across this nation and across this continent, may we obtain grace from God to be humble. Some of these God-like things we continue to do, we need to pray that God will have mercy on us. Otherwise, we'll keep falling like rain one by one at the instance of pride. Pride based on revelation, pride based on oratory, pride based on prophetic prowess, pride based on the miraculous, pride based on wisdom, pride based on all of these things. Anything spiritual, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city, the watchmen watch it but in vain. It is vain to wake up early and to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. So you want to keep growing spiritually, you want to keep accessing supernatural levels of power. Let every lifting that God brings in your life culminate to a greater level of humility. Lord, I am so honored that you have granted me this access. Sometimes when I'm sitting before the Lord in the night and some of these revelations come, tears just come out of my eyes and I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have been merciful to me and I'm grateful. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh. Excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh, excess love, oh. Spiritual pride. The second area of pride is God helping us. Hmm. Tonight's message is hard, bar. Just receive it with love. It is, it is the way we make. The maker is making men. The second aspect of pride is called the pride of life. Please write it down. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 16. What is the pride of life? The pride of life is the self-exaltation. You see, that, that, on that inordinate feeling of importance, that, that, that not confidence, self-exaltation based on obvious achievements, the pride of life is for people who have achieved something tangible. If you have not achieved anything, you can have pride, but not the pride of life. The pride of life is the self-glorification that is derived in the presence of obvious achievements. You have results to show for it. 1 John 2, 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world the pride of life Jeremiah chapter 9 from verse 23 to 24 
the prophet speaking by the spirit admonishes us thus saith the lord let not the wise man glory in his wisdom it does not mean to not celebrate your wisdom uh -uh. you know what pride is the refusal to acknowledge god as the basis for your success the refusal the ashamedness the moment you are embarrassed to let people see jesus as the basis for your victory you want to so enjoy that spotlight you don't want god to interrupt this spotlight lord i've waited all my life to shine and now that the spotlight is on me jesus get out of the way let me not have any interruption let me enjoy and savor the moment let not the wise man glory in his wisdom neither the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man aha uh -huh, glory in his riches what is the pride of the believer 24 but let him that glory yet glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that i am the lord which exercise loving kindness judgment righteousness in the earth for in these things i delight saith the lord everyone say the pride of life this is where all other groups now come in politicians successful people businessmen god intends to lift us but we must be careful our world has a very superior architecture they can design a house where you will die when you rise they consciously we may not know have arrived we call it i don't know what the, have arrived that's the one i know are we together count you know what made the rich man foolish read the bible it was not his money the problem was not the rich the problem was the fool you know what made him foolish he built his bands and stored the and god said today your soul is required of you my father used to tell us many years ago that no matter who you are no matter where you go to make sure you fight pride i think it's one of the most most outspoken virtue that he pounded in our heads growing pride may god bless him for this in the name of jesus christ pride my power and my might i am this I made this happen you hear people make all kinds of statements I've taught you that everything comes from God through men pride is when men want to become the source of everything I can lift you I can do this I can frustrate you ah. we have to be careful there is a God that sits in heaven the monarch of the universe so whilst you achieve all that you achieve using these keys that we keep sharing as god lifts you as god blesses you as god as god honors you make sure that you unashamedly stand before god and before men and tell them the lord is the doer of these things you hear the testimonies week in week out all of the mighty and marvelous things if god has done anything good in and through this life and in and through this ministry and in and through any life here he deserves the glory so when men clap for you appreciate them but be sure to point them to the one who is the doer of every good thing and god says you had a chance to stand and savor this moment and you are directing people to me you are ready for the next level let's go and he will lift you fearfully help those under the anointing there please fearfully to another level this is one of the secrets and one of the graces that i prayed for and i continue to pray for deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 11 deuteronomy chapter 8 remember he gave them a warning koinonia is, is the lord speaking to you tonight he gave a warning beware that thou forget not the lord thy god in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which i commanded this day next verse less when thou hast eaten and are full you see something happens to people when they are not hungry again hunger is not the best 
But it has a way of making you to remember your maker. Is that true? When you are trekking, it's easy to pray in tongues while you are trekking. When you don't have a job, you have something to wake up in the night and pray for. In the name of Jesus, this spirit, you fought my father minus me. You can pray till morning. When you are trusting God for some breakthrough. But when this happens, there is something about men being full. Remember the five, ta- five, the five loaves and two fish? They were hungry and they listened. What happened when they were full? They threw everything and went away. There's no record in the Bible of them telling Jesus, thank you. They left. He said, no problem, leave them. Gather my crumbs for me. Twelve baskets. The same people who were once hungry. Less when thou hast eaten and art full. One level. And hast built houses and dwelt therein. Next verse. And when your herds and flocks multiply. And thy silver and gold is multiplied. You see the key word there? Multiplied. Multiplied. And all that thou hast is multiplied. Then thy heart shall be lifted up. That's the Bible's definition of pride. When your heart is lifted up, no longer your hands again. It used to be your hands lifted up. But when you become proud, your heart is lifted up. And thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Uh huh. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents, and scorpions and drought and where there was no water who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint 16 who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not that he may humble thee that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end 17 and thou say in thy heart the classic definition of pride the pride of life my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this world. My connection is what gave me this electoral victory. My business connection. I am such an astute businessman, you will tell yourself. I am such a great preacher. I am, let it not be that when this has happened and men continue to clap for you, you say my power and my might. Pride therefore is the refusal to acknowledge God before men as the doer of every good thing in your life. Either directly or indirectly. Usual passion. An unusual passion for the attention of men. An unusual passion for self-glorification. A desire for men to keep singing your, sing your praises. Or to sing it to yourself is pride. That th- there is such a craving for attention. Once the spotlight is not on you, there is trouble. It's pride. Unusual craving for the spotlight to be the person there. It doesn't matter what else. Let the light, the darkness be on everybody. But once it is on me, that's it. Maybe I just described someone here. Maybe you are outside following online from whatever nation. And the Lord is saying, this is you. Don't fight what he's saying. The goal of God's word is to purify the washing of the water by the word. The craving. There are people who go out of their way to make sure that they ring bells to make sure everybody knows what they are doing. You buy a new shoe, the whole world must know you bought a new shoe. Is that true? You bought a new Bible, they must first see how the old one was very old. Then they see the new one to show you are spiritual. Some of these things are unnecessary. Please hear me. It's a hard teaching tonight, but it's the Holy Ghost speaking to you. Symptoms of pride. What is the symptom of pride? Embarrassment. Listen. The moment you begin to become embarrassed... To acknowledge God publicly is a symptom of pride. Before God lifted you, you could kneel down and lie down and roll on the floor. But right now, you, are, you make sure you are calculated. I, I can't let this my, this my expensive cloth on the ground. 
Even God knows that it's not cheap. The ones that I bought it, the amount that I know he saw me roll on the ground with that one. And God says, this is for me. The 24 elders take up their golden crown. Not, not rubber crown. Not metallic crown. Golden crown. They drop it on the ground. And they say, holy, holy, holy. That's what keeps them as elders. So the day they stop doing that, they are no longer elders. That's what keeps them as elders. Holy. To him who sits on the throne. They don't worship everybody in heaven. The one to be worshipped is clear. To him who sits on the throne. The pride of life. Nothing wrong with getting all the good things. Can you stand in front of your mansion and roll on the ground before God and say, Lord, you are the doer of this. Let men, devils and angels know that if it had not been the Lord by my side, now may Israel say, God is increasing you in ministry and you stand before men. I'm not talking of shake, sh uh, faking and carrying a form of pride whereas uh, humility and your heart is proud. No, that you can sincerely, you see, people can discern the purity of what you are doing. You can stand here and be saying, oh God, you are the doer and people know that it's just talk in your heart. You are saying, I'm the doer. There is absolutely nothing that you see happening in this house by the grace of God that would not happen if I'm not here. It's a privilege to receive and to spearhead what God is doing. It's a revelation we must have. Some of us, money has brought a lot of pride. There's nothing wrong with having money. But many times, pride money i have millions i have estates thank god congratulations we appreciate and respect you for paying that price to have this but can i tell you 10 minutes without breathing and all that thing it is wicked people who will fight over it while you are gone Listen, realize the brevity of life outside of the help of god it is it is when you wake up in the morning you can think of doing real estate it is when you wake up in the morning you can think of preaching. If he did not wake me this morning, there will be no rema, there will be no revelation, there will be no koinonia. So you can say, thank you Jesus before men. And they say, why are you falling in our hand? We know that you are an intelligent person, you are a professor par excellence. And you say, the fact that my brain is working. I don't make the brain walk. I only read through a brain that is walking. The one who made the brain walk is the one who deserves the glory. Can I tell you this? Many of us, I'm sharing with you a secret. That's why you found out that you stopped rising a long time ago. Go back to that place where you started with God. Roll on the floor and say, Jesus, you are the one who I repent. Forgive me for the foolishness of forgetting about you. I started thinking about my titles. Every time I see anything good, whether it's a text, whether whatever it is that people do, I just stand before him and I say, Lord, you know, you see my heart. I never had plans for anything. If you never bless me, if you never gave me ministry, I am still grateful. But that you have done this, I return back. I'm telling you sincerely, and I'm only saying this because I'm teaching on this. I return back every time from the miracle service or from any service. Once I'm done and all things are done, I get down on my knees. And I say, Father, you have done it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. While I'm saying it, text messages are coming from all over the world. Mighty man of God. I say, Lord, that is dedicated to you. They are just trying to say you are great. What they are trying to say is Galatians 1.24 And they glorified God in me. But Lord, I'm like a host. As that glory is passing, may no devil trap it and kill me down there. Mm -mm. Let it pass and go to him who is due all the glory. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you. 
All the glory belongs to you. Oh, please help those on the other side. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. Oh, God. One more time. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hear me. No matter who you are, and no matter what God gives you, if you are flying a private jet, you are not the wind that is holding the jet. You only had money to buy it from a man who manufactured it. I'm not being sarcastic, I'm only challenging you. If you win an election, as you sit down on that seat, while people are clapping, just tell them thank you. Excuse them out. Lock the door of your office and roll on the ground. Say, Lord, I knew that I would have lost this election. You are the doer. And God says, because you have done this, I vow that you will remain here. And anybody that tries to fight you, I will scatter them into pieces. God helps you as a man of God. Every Sunday you come, if you see one member that comes to share what God has to say, give God thanks. Oh. If I come here and I find 10 people, I will preach with the same fire and the same passion. I stand before the God who called me and I'm telling you this. It's not about the crowd. No. It is an honor to talk to one person about Jesus, to make an altar call and to be in partnership with the Holy Ghost to save lives. Listen to me. The car you have in your house came by His mercy. The house you have came by His mercy. I have houses in Europe. I have houses in America. Congratulations. There are people who have houses but they are mad today. Their brains are not coordinated again to even travel there. As the, the houses they have everywhere, their prayer is for survival. Lord, let me leave. Can I tell you this? The most dangerous thing about pride is not that you will be fought. The most dangerous thing about pride is who will fight you. The Bible says God resisted. If men fight you, you can go to God and say, My father and my maker, men are disturbing me. If demons fight you, you can go to God and say, This three months again. You can use his name. If God fights you, will you use his name to cast him? The name of the Lord is the highest. And if the one, the owner of the name is fighting you, every other altar will join him to fight you too. Can I tell you this? Let me tell you how you know God is fighting a man. Everything fights him too. You, when everything is fighting you, I tear it from me. The hand of God is there resisting you. Everything, favor will fight you. Good things will fight you. Prophecy will fight you. It is dangerous for God to be against a man. Lord, you gave me this beauty. I'm a beautiful woman, beautiful lady. And God says, nonsense. If you die, your beauty will not resurrect you. You acknowledge him. Lord, I am a great man. It's because I'm intelligent. That's why companies are calling on me. And God says, nonsense. Ah. It is not of him that will it. Nor of him that run it. But of the Lord that showeth mercy. I share with you a secret. It's one of the graces that work in this house. Sometimes we see people say, Apostle, you are humble, you are simple. And I say, my humility, it didn't come from my background. Just like that. It's a revelation. I am aware that God can fight a man. It is dangerous to be at the other side of that battle. Rewards of humility. We are about to pray. Please sit down and write this down. Rewards of humility. Hmm. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 4. Please never forget this scripture can we read it together proverbs 22 and verse 4 are you ready one to read by humility and the fear of the lord are riches 
and honor and life. One more time. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor. Are you seeing that riches is not the same as honor? You can have riches and not have honor. You can have riches and honor and not have life. There is a relationship between untimely death and pride. There is a relationship between humility and longevity. James chapter 4 from verse 6. Then we go to verse 10. James 4. But he giveth more grace. One of the blessings there. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Please go to verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, Koinonia, and he shall lift you up. That's where the secret is. Koinonia, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Apostle Joshua Selman, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Man of God, businessman, politician, whoever and wherever, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and there is a reward for it he will lift you so when you see a people who you never see their end they have mastered this ladder this lift called humility what is humility it is not denying what God has done in your life vocally publicly intentionally continually as the basis that when it's all said and done more than your intellect more than your business the doer of every good thing that's humility so you can stand before your estates you can stand before all of your credentials and all, all of that you can stand before the prosperity the bank accounts carrying the billions world over wonderful they are only profitable when you stand and say lord it is not unto these things but unto you I lift my hands and I lift my voice and I will let the world know that it is because of you that these things are before me. We are not ashamed to tell the world today, world over, that Jesus is the reason for what we call koinonia today. Joshua Selman is nothing without him. Koinonia is nothing without him. It's one thing to have the ability to preach and teach and heal and minister. But it's another thing for God to draw people from world over to come and listen and to submit to the grace of God committed to you. Man of God, never get to a point in your life where you become too big to acknowledge Jesus. Thank God for all of these little things here and there, the security that help. For, I, I tell you, I have a confession. You ask the protocol department and the security people, this is my fight with them. They are doing their job professionally. But if it's up to me, I will enter this place, you will not know. If I have a way of just entering there to carry my Bible, once it's time, I just appear here and preach and disappear. I will do it with joy. It's just that there are some levels in life, no matter what happens, there's nothing you can do about it. I know that while some of you watch all these things, some of you are admiring it. And that's what drives you. Be careful. God is warning you now. God is warning you now. God is warning you now. You are laughing, but God is serious. God is warning you now. Read yourself from all of these lusts. You will be celebrated for sure. Nations will call you blessed for sure. But let them be the one to clap while you point them to Jesus. Forever Jesus will remain glorified in my life, glorified in this ministry, and glorified in your life also. That when men look at you and say, from whence come this lifting? Others are saying there is a casting down. What is happening to your business that you are rising in leaps and bounds? I just hear you open a new office. You don't just laugh and say, well, say it again. No, don't say they know. Tell them. You are the doer. Jesus, I acknowledge you. And they say, please leave those spiritual things. What did you do? I tell them, no, 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 no. I will not leave it. This is how it happened. I don't know how it happened for others. What is the secret to this? Your peace. Your children are well behaved. Everybody is respectful. 
not say it's because they know me. Go and ask them how disciplined their father and their mother are. No. No. Am I wasting your time? Can I tell you this? You've heard me say it. When I had this encounter with the Lord, where He taught me the lifting power of humility, this was what the Lord told me. Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. This is what God told me. Ah, for men to see you, that's, that's fine. John chapter 3 and verse 30 must be the lesson that everybody takes home today as far as humility is concerned. He must increase, but I must decrease. Decrease does not mean diminish. Decrease does not mean go back. No. That you exalt him. How do you know you are humble? When men look at you, they remember Jesus, not you. When men look at you, they know. They see all the miracles. They see the signs and the wonders. They see God lifting you. And all they can say is, Lord, you are a wonder. When men look at you and it's only your praises they sing, something is wrong with your approach. For everything God has done in this life, for everything God has done in this ministry, truly to Him be the glory. To Him be the glory. To Him be the honor. No man on earth should give glory to himself all the glory listen let me show you what humility does you stand here lord you are the lifter of my heart i give you all the praise and god says you have done this at this level you don't have a car, you don't have a bike, you are not doing anything, and you are acknowledging me. Let's go higher. You don't know that the, the ultimate goal is to take you there. Once you are here, people say, My God, you are already at this level. And the Holy Spirit will say, Remember what you did when you were here. Do it again. He's giving and pride will say, I'm comfortable. I mean, now you can see me. And some people remain here forever till they find out they are already down here again. But some other people stand here And while people are looking at you You are even You are distracted You are not distracted by what they are doing They call you all kinds of names Daddy, apostle, whatever Thank God for those things But your attention is with Jesus Are you ready for this? He lifts you to the next level You became a governor You became a senator you became a man of God. Now he trusted you. One branch, two branch, two branches, three branches. He now helped you. And he said, Lord, even at this point, may the nation see you through my life. Ah. And men look at you and say, be honest, Jerry. Enjoy this thing. Enjoy this moment. And sometimes you can be distracted. And then he calls you back. I have other people who need to rise. If you want to make this space vacant, I will fight you to make it vacant and leave others. And you say, no. no. I remember how you brought me. And he will still find you in the night rolling. And he says, you are ready? He will move you to another one. When he moves you, you will not be alone. You will find other people that he moved there too. They will now start distracting you. Let's focus on laughing at those who are down. And you tell them, I don't know how you got here. But me, I know how God brought me here. And I will not be distracted. Many times when you are up here, it looks like there are other people below you. Let's gossip, let's mock, let's push them, let's fight anybody who wants to come down. There are people who will remain here for 30 years until they start going down. By the time they are 50, they are back here. You say, I thought I used to know you here. They say condition is a lie. The path of the just is as a shining light. When your tomorrow becomes greater, becomes worse than your yesterday, it is pride. 
A man's tomorrow should not be like this. No! You know people who are walking in humility because you never see them at the last level you saw them. You are right here. At this point, people are already calling you things. Papa, if you are in ministry, you are mentoring people. Everybody, they are just blessing you. Inviting you around the whole world. You are in hotels. You are having all kinds of cars. Jeeps you are enjoying. Everything is zero. And then one night, if God wants to help you, He will call you and say, My son, I'm still waiting for you. Where we used to meet before. Don't distract me, oh God. The spotlight is on me. This was what I looked for growing up. This was what I wanted. People said I would not make it. Now that I've made it, let me stand so that I can have all the moment. And he says, my son, we still have other heights to climb. Don't stop here. But there are others. May you be part of them tonight. In my life, be glorified, be glorified in my life. Be glorified, be glorified. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. While you are busy singing this song and living this song with your life, men will open their eyes and find you here. You are standing with kings and nations. And they say, we used to know him. Ah, humility has a lifting power. It will shift your background, shift your gender, shift what men say. They can say while you rise. They can talk while you are lifted. I tell you this. The end of a man who is truly humble cannot be predicted by any mortal man on earth. There is no prophet, there is no apostle whose eye can see as far as a man with humility can go. Only God can tell the end of a humble man. Just when you think he has attained that, God now lifts him again to another season. Hear me? We're about to pray. The Lord brought you to church tonight to show you that there is a secret. Men do not just rise. God is the lifter of men. Are you ready to pray? Let me give you one key. You have to write this down. One key. What is the key to humility? The key to humility is found in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Please, our global family, the body of Christ, as many who will follow this, do not forget. There are eight words that I want you to remember for the rest of your life as the key to humility. The A part. But thou shall remember the Lord thy God. But thou shall remember not just the Lord thy God. Hear me. One of the greatest keys to humility is remembrance. Remember where God took you from and remember who took you. If you can remember where God took you from and you can remember who took you, you have mastered the key to beating life at its game. Believe me. When David stood before Goliath, Goliath said, Am I a dog that you are coming to me with this sling? He said, God who delivered me. I remember success has a way of eroding your memory that's why there are certain pains and certain things that you are around you is looking for favor and you can never hear people who tell you the truth again times will come you will have to be your own counselor let yesterday be your counselor remember how God lifted you man of God remember once upon a time you had no church no reputation 
politician remember once upon a time you trek without shoes every time men forget they stop moving forward remember 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 this is what i do all the time let me speak to someone here keep the memory of your pain now you will need it tomorrow don't waste your pain your pain is a miracle the scar listen the injury on your hand today is what will keep you when you sit on the throne till today jesus still has the scar the scar reminds him of his love for man again every time you see that scar you remember every time god did wondrous things to the nation of israel listen to me he gave them instructions he says find a way of archiving this if your children ask you and say why are you doing this tell them oh israel you forgot too soon that for 430 years you were in the land of slavery now you began to build idols one of the ways that god brings men to humility when they forget him is to lift his hand and you will see what the devil does in your life every time people were proud he gave them over to their enemies it's in your bible africa could this be why we are going through what we are going through nigeria could this be why we are going through if my people who are called by my name what's the first thing they do not pray not pray we have been praying we have been praying humble themselves it is not because the arm of the lord is too short man of god it does not take god anything to expand your ministry it does not take anything for the anointing you desire if it's prosperity i dare to tell you there are enough destiny helpers enough ideas enough systems and structures for god to lift you read your bible and see the lifting power of god when you become at the center stage of your life forget about the hand of god i remember remember your goodness i remember remember your love i remember remember your faithfulness I remember, remember your grace. I remember a time in my life when I was going to preach. No bike, no nothing, it was raining. I remember trekking in the rain while the rain was pouring on me. I was praying in tongues and going for the meeting. And look what he's done today. And then you forget. Keep that memory. That's what God will use to remind you. Oh, Bilonia, remember that one time you were soaking Gary. And you drink and say to thine, to the Lord be all the glory. But today, you have chains of restaurants around the world. Oh, let it never enter your heart. Oh God, anything you give me, let it stay outside me. Sit in your position, alone jealously guarded by my passion for you don't think i wasted your time tonight i gave you the key to the next level some of you as a company you need to do this go back to god tomorrow when you go to work tell the people to excuse you a bit lock that door and kneel down and say father you may even need to pray your local dialect maybe it will give you room to express it more and say god of heaven you are the one who has shown me mercy forgive me if for any reason i joined an association of unwise people and i started forgetting you in the name of celebrating success be careful with some of these groups and associations they, are, they may not be wrong but we must be careful because some of them mislead us into feeling embarrassed that is the lord once upon a time you could not afford a good shoe but now you can even buy the whole boutique oh please do not forget thou shall remember remember yesterday and remember the lord remember yesterday 
and remember the Lord. Take this message and give anybody you know and you love sincerely. Use it to train your children. If God has blessed you and you are a blessed man with substance, sit your children down. Don't just show them the money. Tell them the stories. Tell them, young boys, you have the privilege to eat anything you eat today and travel around the world. But it was not always like that. I came from a family where we had to use well, to use well to draw water out. God began to help me. If the only thing I give you people is money, I've destroyed you. This is a mistake. And I say it finally before we pray. Most leaders in Africa and Nigeria are making this mistake. We are not giving those who look up to us the stories. We are only giving them the rewards. So a young man now does not know that ministry needs stamina and endurance and pain. Why? Because he just came and received impartation. Received maybe three or five cars. And had his mentor or spiritual father come and stand as a leverage to speak for him. An increase is coming. And he can look and be laughing at people and say, shame on you. Five years, no membership. Because of that leverage. Pain is a gift. Make sure you give those you really love. Don't inflict pain on them. The testimony of your pain, I mean. Share it with them. Let them know that once upon a time you fasted and prayed. That this anointing did not just drop because you read your Bible. And tell them the privilege you now enjoy, do not abuse it. Carelessness comes when process is not known. When people ignore process, the result is carelessness. I'm going to give us two, three minutes. I don't know how you are going to cry before God. I will do my own here. The next two, three minutes, you are just going to say, Lord, if ever my heart is lifted, forgive me. Show me mercy tonight and grant me grace. Pray. You don't have to kneel down or lie down. Just cry before your maker. Please, no movement around. This is a serious moment. Go ahead and pray. Remember in one minute. Remember where his majesty took you from. Dear man of God. Dear apostle and dear prophet. Dear pastor and dear evangelist. Dear politician. Dear academician. Dear millionaire. Dear billionaire. Dear elder statesman. Dear father. Dear parent. Remember where he took you from. Dear student. Dear great man. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, for your goodness. Thank you. If you have to cry, cry. If you have to sing, sing. Just a minute or two and we are done. Let him know that I am still your boy, oh God. I'm still the one you lifted. I'm still the one you helped. I'm still the one you blessed.
I'm here to say how much I love you. I'm here to say how much I adore you. Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles. By your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you solve them. But I'm here to say I love you. I'm here to say I adore you. I'm here to say. I love Lord, as men look at our lives, may they see you. As men look at our lives, oh, may they see you. It is easy to see the glamour. It is easy to see the anointing. It is easy to see the spirituality and the results. It is easy to see the achievements. But Lord, tonight, we declare that we love you. We're wrapping up. And with our hands lifted up, we will worship our King. And with our hands lifted up, we come before you rejoice with our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why we just tell them we love in our king oh we just tell Now I can pray for you. You don't have to kneel. Please just stand. Now I can pray for this grace that brings exaltation. I have seen it. I know it works. Believe me, there is a grace that lifts. There is a grace that grants you access to kings, to systems, to structures. There is a grace that enthrones beyond your wildest imagination. Many of us here have been lifted. We have tasted of honor and glory. We have seen the help of God. But I submit to you that at any level there is still more. There is still more. There is still more. Lord, may we never forget. May the nation see that you are the lifter, the blesser, the anointer, the one who prospers. May the mundane things in this life never get into us to turn our hearts and our minds away from you. May we be ever conscious. And now I pray for everyone here under the sound of my voice. I pray for our global family. I pray for you who is a man of God who has been trusting God for lifting. I pray for you who is a businessman who is at a defining moment. You've been praying for lifting. I pray for politicians, members of parliament, those in government, those in ministry, those trusting God to lift even financially. There is grace. I have seen this grace work. I have seen it work wonders. And therefore in the name of Jesus Christ, as instructed by God, I stretch my hands over everyone here. The grace that lifts the grace that exalts even through humility may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now hear me for some of you this is the beginning of the fulfillment of prophecy all the things you saw in your dreams God was waiting for you to hear this sermon before the angels are activated because where God is taking you you need this message to remain therefore I declare now that you have heard it I call upon my God and your God 
Father, in a fearful way, begin to lift people from tonight. Spiritual lifting, financial lifting, intellectual lifting, ministerial lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ, access to systems, access to the hearts of kings. May that grace come upon you now. Never will you call for help and be left alone again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Anyone who is due for promotion of all sorts and has been kept by reason of any kapatos kalibra palakusia. In the name that is above all names, may this grace come upon you and lift you to a sign and a wonder. Those in ministry, co-laborers in the gospel, I stand in agreement with you that in the name of Jesus, everything that has stunted the growth of your churches, your ministries, your ministerial platforms, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, receive this grace and rise. Some of us have been at the same level for a long time. You have not gone down, but you have not gone up either. I pray for you. By this grace, ye have encompassed this mountain long enough. Rise up now in the name of Jesus. Hear me. Any spirit that has taken advantage of pride in your life, to keep you down, help that gentleman. Any spirit that has cooperated with your ignorance in this area, some of you may have been arrogant based on this psychological thing. It's just your passion to prove a point, your passion to be known and to be celebrated. Any spirit that has taken advantage of you by the blood of the eternal covenant, I cast those spirits out of your life, out of your destiny out of your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ therefore I declare over your life no more stagnation age long doors that have refused to open in the name of Jesus we swing them open now hear me whatever has stunted your office your business the works of your hands Every manifestation of pride that has come through you, directly or indirectly, or has come from your children, and even those you are raising spiritually or otherwise, I pray may the mercy of God speak for you.
me tell you something the kind of deliverance deliverance is not fighting demons no an establishment of the victory of christ experientially upon your life are we together and there will be a massive massive turnaround 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 in a way that will surprise you Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. I want you to really be angry tonight and insist that something must break open in your life. At the count of three, you will arise tonight as the God of Joshua. The one that arrives, he rides upon the wings of the sea. Listen, as you shout that name, it's not a ritual. All I see in this room now is just fire. And I know that the Lord is going to descend with a shout like the warrior that he is. Are we together now? Whether you are in the main auditorium, overflow one, two, three, four by the road, following online. I want you with the simplicity of your childlike faith to shout that name Jesus and that fire will come upon you all. Just must have your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic mantle and I decree and declare it's time to challenge and confront the gates of darkness. It's time for the sons of Jacob to possess their possessions. It's time for families to be restored. Therefore, Lord, as we lift up the shout to hear in the spirit, I pray in the name of Jesus that every power and every source responsible for the retrogression in anyone's life and destiny is time for it to be here. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I command that spirit, I command that devil, bring them out. Shako, Sato, Shabalikata. That shout, I dismantle gates, I cause yokes and ordinances. 
this delay is a wicked spirit it can tie a life and can tie a destiny lift your hands i see that fire locating a group of people lord at the count of three anyone here under the influence of delay any family here at the count of three may that spirit leave you one two three your shame you shall receive double the lord is ministering very powerfully i'm still praying over delay listen very carefully i'm still praying over delay many of you do not even know that currently is delay in your ministry in your life any dimension you should have entered but have not entered is delay i say it again I stretch my hands by this anointing in the name of Jesus. Let the fire that will end the lay fall upon you now. Let the fire that will end the lay fall upon you now. Let the fire that will end the lay fall upon you now. says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest i want to pray i don't know what keys results from our lives there are many well-meaning believers there are many well-meaning individuals you have hands but you can't eat you, there is a song we used to sing growing up it says some have food but cannot eat some can eat but have no food this, this is the category i want to address now you have capacity but no results gifted but not rewarded gifted but not blessed anointed but no one is placing a demand on your grace shalakatos shalakatos ma shalakatos kete 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 shede keta ente rokas kobara hashene kete balakata shkabarato zanda takato shadia epe keto zata makatos kabarakatos ente sekete zeketa japaru kasabayakata ente koto sharakata in the name of jesus i decree and declare whatever has hindered your productivity may the fire of the holy ghost separate you and that spirit now separate you and that spirit now there's a category of people god is ministering to me right now just just walk with me you always do the wrong things there is a spirit that makes you do the wrong things the wrong business the wrong relationship the wrong friends you don't know why everything in your life when there is trouble that's when you come anything good happening you will go away from it to evil he says he says the lord's prayer lead us not into temptation that means a man can be led into temptation and he said deliver us from evil lead us not a businessman can be led into destruction led into temptation a precious anointed lady with a great destiny can be led into temptation lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil listen one of the most treasured gifts that you must covet in your life 
is the ability to hear God clearly. The times we live in now, guess what will punish you again and again? He said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Here's how I quote it. If the Lord is my shepherd, then I shall not want. When you are, many of us hear demons clearly. You hear spirits clearly. You hear voices, nonsense voices clearly. You don't need to pray to hear them. But do you know that many of us now, even our dreams have been hijacked and manipulated. You don't even know whether it's God speaking now or not. They come as an appearance of light, but the message is not consistent with the integrity of God. So you don't even know what to believe again. Dreams are prophetic avenues for the speakings of God to reach the saints. But they can be hijacked and manipulated by the powers that be. A lady can be manipulated to reject her husband. A gentleman can be manipulated to reject his wife. A person can be manipulated to reject his voice, he, his job. There are many people, they got jobs, a spirit told them leave. They thought it was God and they left it. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a vision. Be sensitive, something will happen here now. And I'm seeing people in the realm of the spirit, but I'm not seeing ears. Imagine like a man, no ears. This is what I'm seeing. Now I understand by this vision what the Bible says, he that hath an ear. Physically, we are supposed to have ears. But right now, in the name of Jesus, this is not for everybody. Hold on. I'm praying right now. There is a grace that will open the hearing of people. I stretch my hands. Lord, where are they? The men and women that need to hear you in this season for ministry to move forward i stretch my hands representing the hands of god and i command the hearing ears be open now please help them be open now be open now for business be open now for ministry be open now for your career be open now hallelujah and isaac sowed in that land he sowed in a specific there is a geography to increase it doesn't just happen everywhere there are people today if the devil wants to destroy them he will give them visa to uk they will think his breakthrough not every open door is anointed there are times the devil destroys you by opening doors it's not always closed doors there are open doors that, that are open doors towards doom. He said, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Mm. Thou shalt show me the path of life. He said, for it is in your light that we see light. We're going to cry for divine direction. Many destinies are tied down now because of divine direction or lack of it. Lord, what is the next phase of my life? You can't remain like this and just sit down. What is the next season? What is your blueprint? Lift your voice and pray. Show me, oh God. I buy into the mind of the Spirit. What is your communication for my ministry, for my life in this season? I don't want to be found where you were. I want to be found where you are. Pray. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying, not what he said. What he's saying, what he's saying, what he's saying. He said the Spirit speaketh expressly, not the Spirit spoke. The Spirit speaketh expressly. Direction, oh God. Listen, listen. Let me talk to us a little. Especially, I know that a generation of young people were very proud. We just believe that just because we went to school, we can determine the course of our lives with intelligence. No. Destiny is not just academics and education. 
you must cry part time per second for revelation this ministry by the grace of god we are where we are because not just because of the ability to hear god but the ability to stay until he says move tiredness can tell you to move weariness can tell you to move he said if your presence goeth not with us don't send us from here oh god we are not going do you know it is costly to go without god is cheaper the pain of your waiting is cheaper than the pain of knowing that you are where god is not there are men of god that started well but people encourage you and say this is how they do it in ministry when you get to this level this is the next step and you foolishly took a step a step that ate away your destiny and your progress and your blessing hallelujah it matters that we understand times and seasons and that we can wait until God says move I remember after our second crusade in this ministry the next year we we're discussing and they say where are we going I went to the Lord and the Lord said you are not going anywhere and I said okay we're not going anywhere ah, but I thought we do it every year <clears throat> be careful the ritual of religion can destroy you God used to do this way it doesn't mean he has to do it the same way the most important thing is let it be him doing it treasure of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are merciful mm. redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days to come nothing in this world says Jesus, you are the cup that would run dry. We live our lives being in a hurry is not the same thing as speed. God is a God of speed. I don't know why I'm preaching this now. This is part of the miracle service. God is the God of speed, but God is not the God of rush. There is a difference between speed and rush many of us the spirit of god is speaking to someone here you need to calm down the way you are running with your life you are going to land in trouble the way you are running with ministry you will land in trouble the way you are approaching marriage the way you are approaching destiny you will land in trouble culture and the sociological um, context of our living can mount pressure on us to run ourselves to the ditch my soul wait thou upon the lord god is a god of speed but until he speaks you are on your own it's amazing how you can be running for many years and find out that you are not moving running but not moving and here comes a man as weak as he is but he can walk at the pace of god and more can be achieved in one month with god than 10 years alone have you not learned the excellency of walking with god he said for with god all things without god outside of god there are things that are not possible apostle my life i don't want to be a failure age is already um, not on my side i must make sure that i build a house now i must and god is saying calm down son you have handed your life over to me let me be lord of your life i say lord you don't know the pressure that is coming from my family let's be careful satan comes to attack us at the points of our vulnerability and hijacks us don't miss the series on friday we are rounding up the deliverance series are we together god is already speaking that's what leads many of us to this life of hustling putting your hand in everything and just rushing around and they say why well, say man must work all those nonsense cliches must get out of your life and your mind if god does not lead me i'm not going nowhere you may call me irresponsible but let me die waiting my soul weighs down upon the lord it's now a foreign experience to many of us 
to wait gone are the days that people will say i'm i'm waiting now, people just think waiting is fasting from six to six waiting means waiting the bible says except the lord builds a house listen very carefully it says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city man of god listen businessman he says he says the watchman watched but in vain and my bible says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow only to eat the bread of sorrow i'm speaking to someone be tired of the bread of sorrow the bread of sorrow does not feel the bible says he gives his beloved sleep There are many pastors that just get up and feel anointed and just want to rent one small auditorium and punish themselves punish their wives punish the few people that believe in them because they think ministry is just about opening a place and then we have the gods to tell people come it's not that way paul a man approved of god jesus a man approved of god Is God speaking to us? We need to have results in our lives. We are still praying. But you see, God is not a herbalist. Now, there are systems. There is a way that he works. And one of the ways that he works is to direct men. And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Walk ye in it. And you will find rest for your soul. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying now? It matters. God is interjecting this miracle service to just minister to someone and say you are, you are hurrying up too much. You think it's breakthrough. You are running. You will soon find out that you've been around the same jungle. For someone after this service, you need to go and calm down with your life and say, I've been running since 2005. What have I done with my life? Absolutely nothing. Oh, come Lord Jesus come and direct me give me direction are we together the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong not even bread for them that are wise when a man subscribe to the direction of God your life may look controversial for a while but all that will be before you is beauty and glory then your life will become Beulah and Hephzibah, the delight of the nations, the excellency of waiting. The hardest thing for a believer to do is to wait. It's easy to rush. It's easy to do a lot of things. You will make more mistakes in your life rushing. There is power in waiting. Are we together? There is power in waiting. We're going to pray for the sick now. There's a lot to do tonight. But listen very carefully. If this message is for you, then I want you to receive it from the depth of your heart. You know, when we come like this, there are various things that the Lord is doing to several people. Not everyone is sick. Not everyone is oppressed. But a word can come and God says, be careful. There are people about to relocate now to regions. They've not sought God. They just assumed let me tell you something brothers and sisters there is no place on earth called greener pastures greener pastures is a spiritual location is where the voice of god for you is god is already helping someone how many nigerians smuggled their way through the desert trying to get to lands because they believe the only difference between your locality and any locality in the world is a greater propensity to discern, appreciate, and reward value. That's all. They have a greater propensity to discern, to appreciate, and to reward value. You can be where you are if you are truly directed by God and He will come to you and bless you. Are we together now? How many of you are trusting the Lord to touch you or touch your loved ones we are going to do it very fast because the second session of this prayer i want to settle down and really really pray seriously 
and just dismantle a number of things in our lives the grand finale will be on friday but then you are here we're going to pray for the sick now i promise that we'll do that very early so that we can finish and then attend to other issues now you may not be sick listen carefully but if you are a man of god is an opportunity to watch lord what are you doing how does this thing work what can i learn you must remain a student we're all students in the school of the spirit ever learning but in this case in that learning coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together you are trusting god for a healing miracle if you are in overflow one now hold on i want to specifically minister to barren people myself so if you have any case of barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three please i want to minister to you myself please make your way very quickly and come stand you're trusting god for a miracle let's do it very very fast there is a lot to do very fast the worship team will lead us and just charge the atmosphere for us while we do this very fast and then at the same time to save time at the same time your your requests your prayer requests if you're here and you're you're yet to write your prayer request go ahead you can spare a few minutes to just write it now please listen listen very carefully except whoever is laying hands on you maybe ask you or prophesize to you or does whatever you just once they touch you just go back to your seat some of you i notice they touch you and you move to the other side of the line and still stand it's unbelief praise the lord or you are saying okay you don't know my problem is here and you are touching here the lord is showing me something about this woman <laughs> You don't have fallopian tubes at all oh my god they've removed it your husband got another wife creator of the universe what can you do Look at me. You see, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. I'm not trying to embarrass this precious lady. I don't know you. I'm just seeing you for the first time. I'm not a woman. So I can't pretend to say I know what is happening here. But for a woman to not have fallopian tubes all removed. And now it has scattered your marriage. Let me ask you a question. And I'm asking it boldly. Do you believe that God can give you new fallopian tubes? Where are you coming from? Madam, let me tell you, there is a God that sits in heaven. God is not a herbalist. He's a miracle worker. Put your hand on your stomach. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus. Father, that's all right. I decree and declare brand new fallopian tubes. The God that doeth wonders. Brand new fallopian tubes. I say it again. Brand new fallopian tubes. Madam, allow for some time and go and check yourself in the hospital. Give Jesus praise. Please help this woman. It's an elderly woman. Help her, help her. Social help her. In the name of Jesus, Mama God is delivering you in Jesus' name. The Lord is showing me somebody. It's just so long. You, you will sing, you will go back to your singing. I just want to. I'm seeing the someone, the power of God is going to come upon you here. You are here right now on the line. I want to prophesy to that person. I, I just saw a flash of light, a very strong anointing. Bring the person. The Lord is rolling away the reproach in your life. 
and the Lord is telling me he's breaking the power of witchcraft over your life in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder therefore in the name of Jesus I declare to you not only will you or your brother be healed I decree and declare salvation comes to your family now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ please sing for us that song creator of the universe creator of the universe you in the realm of the spirit and i'm seeing fibroid is that true how long seven years fibroid confirmed in the hospital that devil is going to leave you now in the name of jesus christ do you have children ma? 
I'm not married. You are not married? Oh my God. Now you be God. Almighty God.
and say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over the next half of this year. Hear the word of the Lord. Become for me seasons of signs and wonders. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Everyone. Shalakato Sabra Hasile Kadebakata. Make sure you are praying. Praise God. Please keep praying, keep praying. Let it become for me seasons of signs and wonders. Seasons of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please let's be serious. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of the anointing. Required for my next level of exploits. I receive it tonight in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and please pray. Every dimension. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen. That's the next prayer point. We prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. One more time. Restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, and even the palmer worm has taken. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that everything that has left my life and destiny that should not have left. I call you back by prophecy. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Declare that you might just be justified. Declare.
the name of Jesus Christ. Say it again in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare over my loved ones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is your season of rising. Lift your voice and prophesy over your loved ones. Please believe what you are saying. Prophesy. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. This is your season of rising. A new level, a new dimension in the spirit. says the Egyptians you see today he said you will see them for no more forever I like you in the next five minutes everything that has attempted to mock God in your life don't be afraid open your mouth and declare that under this atmosphere of the anointing of the spirit you are leaving my life and my family forever open your mouth and pray declares thou that ye might as be justified pray don't entertain unbelief I cause poverty I cause failure pray Jesus cause the victory Jesus I decree and declare that my help comes from above I decree and declare that my help comes from the Lord and in this season I prophesy to my destiny a believer receive the help of God lift your voice and pray call for help
listen let me tell you this was he praying many of us here all you need is the ministry of helpers are we together now the psalmist said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills do you know why he spoke about the hills because god used the strategy of the hill to protect the people every time there was war he would lead them up the hill and if they got there there would always be victory remember elijah when it, when there was time for any contest he would say go up the hill mount camel mount zion mount this and that and so he said i will lift up my eyes to the hills but he said no 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 where comments my help he said my help the, the hill is only a strategy the hill is not my source and then he says my help cometh that means just like faith help to cometh faith cometh help cometh your help can come from other places by divination and witchcraft a man can attract a system of attention but he will pay for it listen ebenezer is a revelation of the hand of god that can help a man blessed is a man that finds help from god many people are suffering because there is no help life can be cheap when there is help believe me when i tell you this how much is the rent that the god of heaven cannot pay it how much is it what is the job issue with a single signature a man's life can change but i told you every man who helps you has relatives who are in need it takes a grace and anointing to compel them to leave those who they are connected by blood and come to help you this world is too wicked for any kind of kindness to happen by default i like you to cry father in this season i'm ready to receive of the ministry of destiny help us please open your mouth and cry be serious some of you are looking at me pray pray name of Jesus was you praying this prayer session is a very major part of tonight's miracle service and I want you to pray because people are receiving results we are still going to pray over the issue of help let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters you see this ministry by the grace of God is a product of the help of God my life as a person is a product of the help of God it is vain my Bible says to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said for he giveth his beloved sleep there are men of God that need help there are anointed people that need help there are intelligent graduates that need help there are married men and women that need help 
the holy spirit is called a helper the mercy of god can create a platform for help i've taught you this we are going to pray if you don't pray it will not happen i want you to be tired of your current level financially you all god can step in and you have value you are packaged your value but there is no system of placing a demand you must cry to the heavens lift your voice and pray from the depth of your heart prophesy to the north prophesy to the south prophesy to the east prophesy to the west where is the raven that came and fed elijah at the church? my god arise for me as a helper Shaka Barakatosh, Shaka Taka 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 when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, then we were like them that dream. And then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. He said the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again the captivity of Zion, like the streams of the Negev. Lift your voice and labor in the place of prayer. Everything that is alive grows. I provoke growth in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying over the issue of help. Listen. You are going to pray for your loved ones. I know this about Africa. If you rise alone, you will not remain there. <clears throat> In Africa, as you rise, you pray for your loved ones to rise too. If you are the only successful person out of 15 people, they will stretch you and drain you. If Joseph and his brothers were also equally successful, they will not persecute him. But he was one out of many. I saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing to one person. And the brother said, no way. And they walked him out. My Bible says that a man's enemies shall be the members of his own household. Sometimes it's not binding and casting. Lord, show them mercy too. So that as I'm rejoicing, they will rejoice and leave me in peace. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. I provoke divine help over my loved ones. I prophesy to them that in this season, receive the help of the Lord. Lift your voice and pray for your loved ones. Financial help, spiritual help, career help. Help, oh God. Shabakatos, Shabros kete barakatos shana magata. Hallelujah. Ezekiel thirty-seven, and he took me in the spirit of the Lord, and he took me to a valley, and the Bible says that valley was full of bones. And it says the bones were very dry. Bones don't dry up in one day. It means they have been there for a long time. We want to visit age-long situations that have refused to go. You were born and you met that problem. You have become an adult. You have met that. No, no, no. It must go. That it has stayed long does not mean it's valid. Say in the name of Jesus. Every dry bone in my life and in my family hear the word of the lord i decree and declare let life come to you now lift your voice and pray prophesy life your father lost his job since 1991 till today he has not gotten a job Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. 
hear the word of the Lord. Oh ministry, hear the word of the Lord. Oh business, hear the word of the Lord. Oh destiny, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Bible declares that where the word of the king is, there is power. Hallelujah. And he said, Son of man, what seest thou? He said, Son of man, prophesy to these bones. And say, O bones, hear ye the word of the Lord. And all of that, he said, And as I prophesied, as I was commanded, there was a sound. And then a shaking. Notice that the bones began to look for themselves. Meaning they have the ability to restructure themselves. Kabbalakota mm. shikata. And then the bones were there, but there was no life. He says, Son of man, prophesy again to the four winds and say, O wind, breathe upon this lane. And the wind came and breathed upon the bones, and there arose an exceeding great army. Listen, God is able, God is able to turn a man's captivity overnight. He said, Have you ever heard that a city gives birth in one day? But he said, as soon as Zion travails, we know that birth is nine months. But something can happen to the rod of Aaron and it can bud overnight with no root. I like you to say, Lord, let the supernatural work in my life in this season. Business at a supernatural rate. Ministry at a supernatural rate. If it is the Lord's doing, then it must be marvelous in my eyes. Lift your voice and pray. As soon as Zion travails, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. As soon as Zion travails, pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The apostle said, I desired once again to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Your breakthrough desired to come to you, but Satan hindered it. Your helpers desired to come to you. Have you seen a situation, Jimmy, where someone is about to bless you but before you reach your helper your enemy got there before you and told them something that turned their minds against you he said the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity please i'd like you to be angry in your spirit and pray we are not here to waste time Brothers and sisters, this is how victory is legislated and established in the kingdom. Are we together? It says, do not be ignorant of the devices, the methodologies from the word stratomai, the methodology of Satan. There are methods. It said, do not let your good be evil spoken of. Have you seen that that's a method? That I call you and Satan makes me interpret it as sarcasm. I just called you to say how are you and he says so you are mocking me it's, it's important that your good is interpreted as good Jesus went to a city and they didn't receive him do you think they just they don't, please carry your healing rubbish and go how many men of God were sent by God to families to help them but the devil changed their perception over that grace say no 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 anything pastor they are all riffraffs they are beggars they are liars they are hungry people they just want my money it's a strategy someone wants to teach you something and help you say no this this guy don't no 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 I desired once again to come to you but Satan hindered us how many people today would have been helped by God are we together now you heard that they are applying jobs 
but the devil made you feel that just because there are people scamming people everywhere the job that was your own was a scam too and you sat down and said no way and today you are still employed we need to cry to God to help us know what is of God and what is not of God because many times they look the same it's the spirit of discernment that will help you five people may be cheating you but the sixth person may be genuine and you can't you join anybody that comes and then you remain poor and broke forever there are families today you never talk about anything good sir they gave us a prayer no 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 that's how that useless prophet came and prophesied and collected my hundred thousand don't bring any man of god here whereas the person who god was sending was like elijah to the widow of zarephath the fact that there is evil does not mean the grace of god is insufficient please listen to me there are people today who have been ordained to be blessed to listen but satan has clouded their minds so that they are cynical about everything that is god are we together i remember a few years ago i went to a house to pray for them i was invited and i got to the house i usually don't go to people's houses to pray for them and i went to the house and uh, um i just saw the man the, the owner of the house the sarcasm and the look that he was looking at me here they come these hungry young men again i tried to greet him i even held wine for them so that there's no suspicion and that man from what i saw didn't have up to two months to live And I sat now, I was talking with the family and the man was just looking, you know, you know, all this, do, do and leave my house. Until by the mercies of God, God began to speak to him. At the end of it, it was him that escorted me out. He said, ah, ah, you are, you are, you know, my friend, they collected my, I said, look at this man would have missed this miracle. Brothers and sisters, some of our loved ones, you know what I'm saying, are like that. Their blessings kept passing for the last 10 years. They organized a program near your house. And they say, no, 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 no. Once it is not you, it is not God. It's an error. What of business opportunities? Just because people have been scammed here, just because something came out and something happened, they anything business, God forbid, don't even mention anything. Oh, sorry, dear son. No, 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 no. Don't talk to me. And then you remain poor and broke and say, God, what is wrong? He told Joshua, be strong and of good courage in life it takes audacity to know when your opportunity comes 28 of genesis god came to jacob and jacob out of his fear and cynicism was not ready for that visitation the next verses would lead him to the house of laban where he learned by his pain by chapter 32 he was ready the bible says when god came again he held him he said whether you are not god i will hold you it's in your holding i will find out i won't let you go till you bless me he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no more be called jacob but israel for as a prince you have power with god and you have prevailed and he touched his tie and blessed him and the bible says then the sun arose and he called the name of the place peniel for he had met with god face to face i have seen god face to face and my life arose and the bible says then the sun arose because it is the breaking of the day that comes with joy for as long as it is night weeping endures are we together i want us to maximize these meetings let's not just come before god and fulfill the ritual and then share the grace and go back it's time for us to move the bible says how forcible are right words you are hearing something that is waking you up and challenging you are we together i know i took i think i took i don't know if it was a whole month or so to pray for destiny help us Hey, Jimmy, your life is stranded until a helper comes. I know this. There was a man who was so crippled he could not walk. And Jesus came to town. He heard about it but could not get there. But certain people came. Your helpers will insist till you are blessed. Listen. A helper is not a well-wisher. A well-wisher is just a sociological being with a sense of empathy. A helper is sent and ordained. His ministry continues till you rise. 
some men came to david in a cave called adulam and they vowed that we must make you king you are seeing a man who is already weak no result ah when your helpers come to you it will look like a charm there will be no reason for them to remain they will call you have you gotten the job sir no sir ah after okay i'm going to abuja for you and you start saying i hope there's no string attached no 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 i only saw myself helping you in a dream are we together every destiny helper has those in need please hear me graduates hear me oh every space for a job has hundreds of thousands of others connected but when god decides to help you he said jacob have i loved jacob have i loved hallelujah jacob have i loved God changes the rules as if it's unfair to you. Haba, there is such a dimension, the helper of Israel. When you labor and labor and labor and labor, you'll be lying to say you are giving God glory. There are many testimonies that are just a product of carnality. The way you suffered for that miracle is why you cannot give it when God places a demand. Greed has an explanation. When you, when you acquire by labor and suffering and hardship, you can't give. But if it's freely you received, it freely you will give. Are we together? Your destiny is one helper away. By the privilege of God's grace, I've been privileged to be a destiny helper to many people. And overnight, they got jobs without interview. Just because I happen to know someone in a position of influence. And I say, sir, please there is someone can you help me i say apostle if it's you that's it the same way someone too has spoken is the help of god we rise by his help your business will open up by his help everything you have is needed on earth but it takes god to connect you to a man who is unashamed about his need for your grace it is the help of god that brought us here brothers and sisters the help of God there are pastors that need the help of God you can blow balloon and put it around you can do everything and find out that the people come and say it's cold don't we take tea in this church and be sarcastic towards you yet somebody called by God to help you will stand in the rain and say I'm sent and I'm not going anywhere when last did you receive help in your life when last did you receive help Please hear what I'm telling you. Do you know if you do things alone and by yourself, you are not blessed? Even if you succeed in doing it. Help. Help. That God arises for a man and say, young men establish within 10 years, but I have chosen promise that in one month, I will do i will walk a walk in your life that if it were told you you will not believe hallelujah a few weeks ago someone called me he was he was he's planning on getting married and he went and collected the list just two or three weeks ago and the list was quite voluminous and it challenged him and he called me that he's trying to seek advice whether it's the will of God or not. I told him, I said, no, that, that is a foolish, that is a foolish concern. Are you seeing, the, you labored with a lady to go and meet her parents just because of the enormity of the list. You are now seeking whether it's the will of God, going behind. What is there to ask whether it's the will of God or not? Listen, I know that it looks like it's just a joke, but it's a serious issue. How many people have gotten high blood pressure because there is no help? No help. Ask the medical doctors, they will tell you. You buy a car alone. You look for food alone. You walk alone. You seek counsel by yourself. You advise yourself. No helper. You see people moving like Cain all around. Nobody to help. Nobody to advise you their pastor pastor bolaji do you know sometimes pastor bolaji would call me 
and say man of god how is everything happening i hope here in the north there's nothing you know this and that you're fine everything and i say oh pastor you're a busy man why do you have to do this and he said we need to encourage ourselves and i said my god help 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 are you ready for god to really help you our message is by the grace of god are being spread on eagle's wings is by the spirit but is through the help of men 70 percent of the invitations where i go to somebody stands maybe in a church council to say bring this man of god i know see all these people from the north no 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 i know this one who knows you enough to speak for you at the gates because there are times you are not permitted to enter the chambers where your value is needed but it will take mordecai uh, mordecai mordecai is outside but mordecai needs to find favor with the king but it will take god using someone inside joseph is in the prison but destined for the throne a wine presser needs to split your case before the king one more time father listen listen whoever must rise up and be an instrument to shift me to the next level please send them to send them my way i want i i cry that you pray with all your heart men can be helped of god my help cometh from the lord there were many widows in zarafat they all needed help but to none was elijah sent except a widow in zarafat how about the rest there were many widows also needing help but god chooses to send a prophet to just one of them hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll pray here the bible says according as his divine power please listen hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness to life i will never be the man of god who will teach you to live a defeated life at the expense of your spiritual growth no no there are matters that pertain to life there are matters that pertain to godliness his divine power covers them all so i can excel in the matters that pertain unto godliness and still excel in the matters that pertain unto life i should not serve god and tell my children to go and beg a neighbor for food he says since i was young now i am old i have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread you know many believers in their carnality and the depravity of wisdom they think that when you begin to focus about the matters of life it's a sign that you are becoming less spiritual i can tell you from experience that the pain that comes from the issues of life can make you ungodly are we together the ladies that go into prostitution do they go into prostitution with poor men the young men that join occults all these cult groups vibrant young people and the next thing you see they are in a devilish cult somewhere it's easy for us to criticize them but you will be surprised that it's from that occult they are feeding their families compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity as a man of god i must be compassionate enough about your situation thank god for your spiritual life but i want you to do well that's what success means are we together i have food in my house right now but do you have food only a wicked man of god will enjoy and rise at the expense of the rising of others a true shepherd lays down his life doesn't climb on the ship some of you sow into my life i must teach you how others will also sow into your life it can't be all about me you are bringing seeds you are blessing me and i'm seeing the benefit of it to my spiritual life but how about you i came with a passion tonight if one person rises in a ministry alone is that a blessing no he called many sons to glory not a few 
there are many of you with business ideas there are many of you with ministries there are many of you desperately waiting for a job and men are beginning to say where is your god you are no longer young you have been praying and fasting and doing all of this if you cannot bring fruits that befit your work with god we will stop you from coming for koinonia or we will stop you from doing this and god wants to arise and prove himself mighty why won't you pray well when you eat well why won't you pray well when you the receipt of your children's school fees is being paid for i have the privilege by the mercies of god to support many families here and sometimes I, my eyes are full of tears after a powerful meeting and i see someone standing and say sir my children once upon a time two dear ladies here for five years a jimmy just to buy jam form beautiful wonderful godly ladies and that's exactly what satan wants after the prayer after falling under the anointing you get up and your needs remain and you sit in the night and say look can't i do something the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity many of us have dipped our hands in iniquity simply because of the hunger that is in your belly was it not hunger that took israel to egypt talk to me was it prosperity that took them there no there was hunger in the land and israel had to go to egypt to look for food they went to egypt and stayed until they became slaves when they began to say it's time for our exodus pharaoh looked at them and said uh-huh you are beginning to find some level of convenience don't give them straw is because you are giving them straw that they have the time to even call upon the name of the lord leave them to find straw by themselves and they say moses don't go to pharaoh again every time you want to rise it's like a it's like a thermometer the devil tries to make sure that there is a harsh climate economically and otherwise i stand to tell you you can be of influence you can be prosperous and you can be spiritual jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor with god and with men the lamb's wife is a balanced woman he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city that was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth any doctrine that does not preach that balance is not presenting the lamb's wife you are showing something else the lamb's wife is a balanced city the church of god must arise and help believers to do well in life this you see a lot of people prayer warriors torn trouser torn destiny you just see them move around you now go to say i want to marry you and the girl's father said if i ever see you near the corridor of my house he said but i praise i say so what we keep mocking the name of the lord there are many people do you know that the times that i've had counseling people a major reason why people backslide and leave god is that they get to a level in life now where the matters of life stand glaring before them and they are surprised that as spiritual as they are now the church started as a prayer meeting and you were doing well healing the sick now suddenly you have gotten to a size where you need rent and you just realize that per use is hundred thousand your prayer life just starts going down slowly all of a sudden you find out that your wife is pregnant and they say just bring something just to test and make sure she's fine say i don't have anything say well the god that we serve is a victorious god are we together many of you have the hearts to support the kingdom but the means is not there listen to me listen to me for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave in life i give you a guarantee for as long as you are not empowered you will remain a slave the anointing comes upon you but alongside the anointing is capacity for influence it took a man of influence called joseph of arimathea to get jesus from the cross it was not a prayer warrior that brought jesus from the cross a prayer warrior supervised his birth but a wealthy man supervised his resurrection we're a ministry of prayer we're a ministry that fasts we're a ministry of the word but we must be a ministry with results that are all around 
and abraham was old and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed him in all things not some things the last prayer point like naaman you may be the captain of a great army the bible says he conquered valiantly but he was crippled the one or two areas in your life i'm giving you a personal time of supplication now one or two areas in your life that must balance this equation to present christ well let's cry together and say god you have done well in this area and i thank you but lord i cry that in this area may your glory be represented in my life please lift your voice and pray please pray in my life keep praying be glorified be glorified cry to the lord in my life be glorified be glorified you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you lord you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor keep praying i just want to say thank you so many my life Stretch your hands over the prayer requests and let's begin to pray. This is a representation of our pain. It's a representation of our needs. Just cry to the Lord. from the dead the Lord every request here before you upon this altar I ask my God and my King the one who heareth them that call upon you arise in your majesty and turn these requests into testimonies it is unto you that answers prayer that we have come and Lord in the name that is above all names we provoke your integrity over these issues 
lord there are issues here that only god can solve some of the issues represented here are life and death issues we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our hearts we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship with all my heart lord i will search for you and i will find you i will find you with all my heart and i will lift my voice to you in worship i will worship you are god from beginning to the end there's no place for argument you are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. I speak over this request in the name of the Lord God of heaven like he has done it before may every request here before god be turned now into supernatural testimonies may god turn every situation here to supernatural testimonies in the name of jesus christ just give me two three minutes and we're done. I want to speak over your life now. When you hold my hands, everything becomes possible. When you hold my hands, everything, everything becomes possible. the wind in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every man of God represented here fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar in the name of Jesus Christ every issue of concern in your career in your business and in your life I send the word of God like a messenger to reproduce the garden of Eden over your issue in the name of Jesus Christ when a man's ways pleases the Lord he make it even his enemy to be at peace with him I declare whoever must be at peace must be at peace with you to rise I command peace to happen between you master we have toiled all night he said nevertheless at thy word i want to prophesy to you where you failed before go back again with an anointing go back 
up with the grace that makes men succeed in the name of Jesus Christ and the Lord visited Sarah and she called the name of her son Isaac he said all those who hear about this will laugh with me I introduce you to a new season of laughter 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 turn again our captivities like the streams of the naked I pray for you it will be like a dream of the night the way God will turn your life around anyone here under the plague of death any family represented here that the devil has vowed that they will not see the end of the year together in joy i decree oh death where is thy sting and oh grave where is thy victory i command death to pass from over you in the name of jesus he said let the people praise me and then the earth shall yield every ground can yield i command your ground to produce for you Amen. daniel chapter 2 and when you read from verse 28 downwards he said but there is a god that revealed secrets i pray for you the secret the mystery that you need to hold on to in this season that will shift you to a new level the kingdom truth the revelation of the spirit because the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the truth you need to lay your hands upon may my God open your eyes to see it and the Bible says that you shall be called all nations shall call you blessed and you shall be called a delightsome land it's called Beulah and Hephzibah a land that is desirable and isaac looked at his sons and said the smell of my son is like the field that the lord has blessed i decree and declare may the fragrance of heaven that calls for favor to men may it come upon your life now in the name of jesus christ it says thou causes men to ride over our heads we walk through fire and through water but thou brought us into a wealthy place i decree and declare help even in the area of finances may it arise for you i say it again help even in the area of finances may it arise for you finally i pray for every family represented here and that includes those connecting with us online it doesn't matter what part of the world you are following from in the name that is above all names the lord has made a, declared, a declaration that this is our year of signs a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it therefore i decree and declare may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders i say it again may your life from tonight become an epistle of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus, wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Paradventure, you are here in this place tonight. Everyone, please listen. Please, no moving around. Let's honor the name of the Lord. You are here. You have seen what the Lord has done. You've heard me teach. And the Holy Spirit began to convict you, to tell you, that the time had come for you to make Jesus Lord of your life and to take him seriously I want to give you that opportunity right now there are people here saying apostle I've heard about God I've been around the things of God I've been around church I have a Christian name my father may even be a man of God my mother is an intercessor but I I declare my need for God tonight and then there are others here who are saying apostle I have given my life to Christ but at one point or the other I just found my life going haywire and I'm saying I need Jesus if you belong to any of these categories I like you to make a bold step overflow one overflow two the main auditorium you can walk and come out here and then overflow three you can go 
in front of your projector stand if you are there please make your way quickly let's honor them as they come the holy spirit is convicting someone don't wait for someone to come be the first god bless you koinonia are you appreciating them in the name of jesus christ there has to be someone making a decision for jesus god bless you god bless you keep clapping as they come win that war tonight win that war god bless you as you come it says he that cometh to him he will in no wise cast away make your way make your way to this front god bless you keep coming we have one minute for you if you're coming from outside please double up your steps very quickly very quickly say call for total surrender lord you gave me your life i'm giving you mine right now are there people still coming make your way very quickly apostle i'm not sure if i'm born again or not i've been around the things of god but i'm not exactly sure join them join them quickly when the titanic sank there were only two names those who were lost and those who were saved no in-betweens make your way quickly hallelujah i salute every one of you if you are joining them please join them very quickly overflow three you can move to the front of your projector those online giving their hearts to jesus just follow and pray along with us by faith in the name of jesus now i want you to lift your right hand sincerely you're not reciting a poem you are speaking to the lord and he's here listening to you say after me lord jesus say it again say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you shed your blood for me i believe that you were raised up for my justification tonight i hand over my life to you and i receive your life in return i declare that the power of sin the power of the flesh the power of satan is broken over my life i declare that i'm a child of god i am saved the grace to walk in victory to walk in liberty is mine now in jesus name keep your hands lifted jesus i present to you the ones you died for we thank you for bringing these ones out no man can come to the father except you draw them lord jesus i pray that the grace that keeps men in this kingdom let it be supplied your people right now in the name of jesus christ i declare over your life and i decree that you are going forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus christ every challenge you came here with as a result of this new life let new victories come for you in jesus name i pray a big congratulations to you thank you so much now i want you to follow someone waving his hands there's a gentleman waving his hands there can i see who is waving his hands now please very quickly i'd like you to follow him all of you in concert just follow the gentleman there'll be a group of people to just meet with you very quickly and very briefly let's honor them hallelujah